What's up, everybody? How's it going? We are here for Classic Cast number 11. We're here for Classic Cast number 11, and we are here with Crendor, uh, the, the artist formerly known as Wow Crendor, along with uh, my friends Tip Sal and Stay Safe. And uh, Crendor, do you, do you want to go ahead and uh, int introduce yourself? Uh, sure, I can do that. There we go. Um, <clears throat> hello, everybody. Uh, I am Crendor, formerly known as Wow Crendor, mm -hmm. but pretty much the same thing. Uh, I've been doing YouTube for, it's going to be 10 years in January, which is kind of insane because that's like a chunk of my life, essentially. <laughs> I get people always that'll combine like, dude, Crendor, I used to watch you when I was like eight. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, so it's just, I don't know, people have like gone through tears of school yeah. in the time they've like watched me. So I'm like, it's cool, man. Um, but yeah, I uh, used to make a lot of WoW machinimas uh, back. I started like around Wrath of the Lich King. And then uh, after doing YouTube for a while, I like branched out. Uh, well, I guess I did WoW YouTube, then I branched out into Variety YouTube. And then I was lucky enough to get on things like the Co-Optional Podcast and get to know a bunch of people. And then I started streaming. And uh, now I've been streaming for about five years i've been streaming for like five years now because i've got some subs that are around 60 ish months Jeez, that's so, wow that's wild so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah um so it's just one of those things where like i've just been in the been in the industry yeah. for so long that it's like just <laughs> it, i feel like one of those like old uh veteran sports guys when you think like like <laughs> basketball or foot like a like terrence newman or right, something. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah i've been around you know it's not like a name you're gonna hear at home all the time but like you're just you've been around you have connections you know people and i just kind of keep floating around yeah. so that's fine with me i like i like just floating around yeah it's, and you have uh, over like, over <laughs> five hundred thousand subs on youtube floating around so that's pretty good too yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of floaters. Yeah, it's a lot of floating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, and then uh, I mainly got into YouTube in general just because of WoW. So, I mean, I got started playing Vanilla WoW way back in 2005. It was January of 2005. So, I start things in January, essentially, is what I've learned about myself. Yeah. Just New Year, um, New Year, New Task. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, so I think. When did Vanilla Wild come out? It was like November of 04. November. So yep. Yeah, it's like a couple of months after that. And I remember because uh, all my friends were getting Vanilla Wild. Uh, it was just Wild then. And so right. um, I was <laughs> like, oh, well, I want to play this. But you couldn't download it because, you know, you didn't have Steam. You didn't have like Battle.net or anything. Like, well, I guess you had old school Battle.net, but like, yeah. you know. You it wasn't anything like it is now. Like, yeah. And yeah. so right. I remember I went to GameStop. And I bought the uh, the box, <laughs> like the the actual box, you know. And then they only had two left, and so I got one of the remaining two uh, old vanilla WoW boxes. And everybody else was sold out because it was yeah. crazy. So I was like, oh, I'm just gonna go buy it. And then you couldn't find it anywhere. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I was just hooked from there on. Yeah, I think if I if I remember hearing this right, I think they sold out like on launch, oh, like it was it was almost impossible to find after like mm -hmm. right after launch and then they had to like it, it was almost like a second launch like the amount of like stuff that they had to put back out and it, it wasn't like it is now like right. you said like it's like now everybody just like downloads whatever expansion or whatever game they want like through steam or mm -hmm. it's it's crazy how things have changed in like that amount of time yeah i mean I it was sort of like it was, was sort of like almost though. like a second relaunch during christmas because it came out mm -hmm. you know like like almost a month right before christmas in december I don't think they expected it to have, like, the amount of sales that it actually did. I think even they were surprised, in a way. I mean, I guess they did have things like Steam, but it's not, like, the Steam we know today. Yeah. You know, and even then, like, like, people would buy, like, box copies. Like, I, I got a box copy mm -hmm. of Half-Life 2 and, and Orange Box, I think. I think I got both of them in the store. But, I kind of uh, miss that, too. Yeah. I like going to the stores and seeing all the boxes, like, on the, on the display on the walls and stuff. Yeah. It's kind of fun. Yeah, for sure. So, um, you were you you've been out a while, like as like your main focus for a while now, and mm. I, I know, like you said, you've been streaming for like you know five years now, and recently, like you've been streaming a lot of League of Legends. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you what are you looking at in, as far as like getting back into WoW? Um, do you want I mean, to do it through getting... BFA or, or are you just going to wait for Classic? Um, 
I've been playing some BFA. I really like BFA too. Like I've been doing all the uh, the pre expansion stuff, and then me and my friends who've been like getting some transmog gear and doing all that. But uh, I've really liked what I've played so far. Lore wise, I don't know if I like it so much. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, in terms of like gameplay and having fun, like I uh, I pretty much have mained a priest for half the expansions. Um, and then I played a druid in Wrath. I played a mage in Legion and TBC, but everything else I played priest. And so I was just kind of tired of pastors. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make a warrior. So I just boosted oh, okay. my like 73 warrior I've had since vanilla because he's just got, I used to use him as, as like my gathering guy. He had mining herbalism and I would go to Azshara. And I would just go like and get all the herbs and Azshara, and then I would go up to Winter Spring and I would mine Thorium, and I would do that for hours, and then that's uh, <laughs> that's how I'd make money in Vanilla WoW. Yeah, uh, I was also you typically... like, fourteen at the time, so I don't even know if it was a good way to make money. <laughs> do you typically play Alliance or Horde when you play? I'm pretty much Horde. I did play Alliance that's last right. expansion, uh, but primarily Horde. I've made a. I've been an undead priest and a goblin priest, essentially. Gotcha. Mm. Zug, zug. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> whenever, like, so what, what's your vanilla experience, right? Like uh, farming mm. mines, uh, you know, mining thorium, that's one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but what, what, else, what else did you do in vanilla WoW? Um, so I take a long time to level in vanilla WoW because I'm not great at video games, which I think people who watch my streams have figured that out. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so back then I remember I got to like level 43 uh, I got to my early 30s in WoW and then I quit to pl I played Star Wars Galaxies for a while because I was like it's taking forever to level um, and then all my friends quit and played that too but then we came back and so then I got to like 43 and I still didn't have my mount at 43 because your mount was just expensive yeah. to actually buy or the training was the mount it was one of the two it was really expensive and yeah. so I uh, I finally got it then, and then I pretty much played up to 60, and then I saw a guy in Orgrimmar, and he was wearing the, uh, what's the shaman tier one? Um, earth, uh, earth something. Yeah, earth something. It looks like a, like, volcano. Like, right. Like, uh, but I saw that, and I was like, oh my god, that looks so cool. I yeah. want that. Yeah. And so, I wanted to raid Earth Fury, that's what it is. And so, uh, it made me want to raid and so I was like, well, I want to join a guild. So I joined uh, just one of the like, top guilds with my friends on the server. And then uh, I guess they wouldn't be a top guild because they wouldn't even invite me in. But like, you know, a guild <laughs> that could <laughs> do 40 man raiding, which in itself is kind of crazy to get 40 people together all at the same time. Yeah. Um, and so then we just raided Molten Core and then I just kept progressing. And I did all of the vanilla raids except for Nax at the end of it. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Dude, yeah. it, it's so funny that you mention the, like, you know, just seeing that shaman, seeing the Earth Fury shoulders, and, like, that, that's, like, totally gone in the game now with transmog. Like, people still have, like, oh, like, mm -hmm. I want to transmog to that. Like, that's what people want. But, like, mm -hmm. people, that guy was wearing those shoulders because they were good, right? He wasn't yeah. wearing them because, you know, they look cool, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, if they look cool, that's great. But, <laughs> but like, <laughs> yeah. people wore the gear for the stats, and oftentimes they gear with the best stats, they they look the coolest, you know. Mm. Um, now, while I actually like with the current state of the game, I actually couldn't imagine not having transmog in like you know in, in retail WoW, just given yeah. how everything's gone, and also the fact that I I don't think a lot of the gear looks cool, like a lot of the newer gear. Yeah. But um, I, I just think it's funny, like how how stuff like that's changed so much. You know, you you look back on it, and the game has changed a lot. That's something that I. I kind of miss too because that's mm -hmm. the it's the whole argument behind like epics were epic but it's you know it's almost <laughs> yeah. extended beyond that because they really were epic because you saw somebody wearing it and it made you be like oh my god that's yeah. literally epic like it's so cool I want that I want to do that thing to get that well now it's like oh where do I go like farm to get that in like a few hours yeah, yeah. I, de I definitely think to value looking cool you have to spend a lot of time looking stupid and yeah. in vanilla WoW, you, you spend a lot of time looking really stupid. In yeah. yeah, absolutely. Dude, I remember whenever, so, so you know, we, we used to do a lot of PvP. We're paladins. 
uh, I would play with Spoogie, and Spoogie would be literally like he, he would he would literally be embarrassed to be in his PVE Holy Paladin healing gear because he just looked like a moron. <laughs> like, yeah. His PVP gear looked awesome because he had like the full judgment and you know, yeah yeah all the cool stuff. But it's just so funny because yeah exactly that's a really good way of putting it. And really it wasn't even it. just like that gear like you had to have your other sets too like your fire resist set you mm -hmm. had to have your like anixia cloak like there's you had to swap between things it wasn't just like well i've got my one thing equipped and that's it but i mean i see why they did it it simplifies it um and it used to be different it used to be more of a role-playing game i think and now yeah. it's more of a yeah. you know it is what like, it is now <laughs> yeah i, I kind of I, I say it's more like action rpg now uh, mm -hmm. No, they have slowed the game down quite a bit in BFA compared to Legion, but it, it's still a lot of the same uh, as far as, like, them having, like, gone away from what Classic was. I think they pulled back a little bit, but it's still still a ways to go. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I mean, I still appreciate it for what, like, it is currently. It's just, it's definitely not what it used to be. And I yeah. think uh, that's the big thing with Classic WoW coming up is I want to see what it really used to be because I've forgotten because it's been, like, 15 years you know yeah exactly um, so and, that's uh that's why i'm really looking forward to it yeah and, and that's really like one of the big things and, and we talk about this you know all the time and this is really going to be the the main uh you know the, the main focus of this podcast probably is uh talking about like nostalgia as far as classic goes versus game design because you know they're, they're two different games right now the retail game and the classic game are, are really two different games and uh, some people like one, some people like the other, and some people like both, and then that's fine, right? Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of the argument against Classic is a lot of people say that, oh, it's a big nostalgia trip, and people just want, that, that, that's just what people want, right? People just want the nostalgia, and then they're going to get bored or whatever, they're not going to like it. Uh, what, what do you guys think about that? I mean, when you look at every, every like publicly available piece of data out there about vanilla, you can see that you know it does extend beyond nostalgia, and it's it kind of it's bigger than classic itself. There's a lot of people that think the older way of doing things, or just like old things in the past, are naturally not as good as the things we have today. But there's such thing as timeless classics. Like we have The Godfather in, in cinema. We have you know in television shows like things like Sopranos and stuff like that. We have Stairway to Heaven in music. There are some things that are just good and they're timeless and they endure you know 10 years 20 years 30 years and uh I, I consider classic to be one of those things i don't think it's just nostalgia i just think the game design happened to endure and i think it's something that mm -hmm. even 10 20 years from now you can enjoy you know mm -hmm. I yeah think, I um sorry go ahead. Go. i was gonna go. say yeah yeah I, I agree with him like um all of that is true vanilla wow definitely <clears throat> It, it 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 stands its own i think regardless of what year it is it's a very very good game and on top of that i just don't think there's anything really wrong with nostalgia either i mean have, who, who here has gone back to replay ocarina of time or or whatever like mm -hmm. or, or any mm -hmm. old game you played when you were a kid like just because you played it then and enjoyed it then does not mean that you know in current year it's a bad game right it it, mm -hmm. it, it is timeless like tips out suggested yeah i definitely agree with that i mean it's just one of those things where it gets spoken about so much by other like you don't know what it was like in vanilla wow you damn kids <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so i think so many people want to go back and be like all right how was this vanilla wow because so many people didn't actually play it and so they're just curious to see because you'd be like oh i had ultra egg valley and it lasted 10 weeks you know and so people are like well i want to go experience that ultra egg valley the last 10 weeks and i feel like a lot of people are going to go back and play that and they're going to not even they're going to be like, oh, this is dumb because they're already building their hype up so much when really, you know, it was it was like a, a fun time. But when you hype something up, like when you hype anything up, uh, it usually doesn't live up to those unrealistic mm -hmm. expectations. Yeah, I, I was talking to uh, I don't remember who I was talking to, but I was talking about this the other day. And uh, oh, yeah, pretty much like with anything, anything that has that much hype whether it's classic, another game, whatever it is, you're going to have this big popularity spike right at the beginning, and, and you're going to have a natural drop-off. So that's something that is, is more than likely going to happen with classic, but it's not going to be something that should be alarming. I think that's something that should be expected. Um, mm -hmm. You know, some people might come back, and, you know, they just might want the taste for the nostalgia. Some people might, you know, just want to see what it's like for the first time. I think that's a lot of people. Um, one of the biggest things that I've noticed 
one of the biggest things that I've noticed is that whenever people talk about classic coming out, it m most people are saying that oh like I started playing at the end of vanilla or like I started playing Burning Crusade, so like I just missed it. I, you know I was start I was leveling, but I really didn't get to experience vanilla um, like everybody talks about, right? And I think I, I think that's what's going to be the honestly probably a heavy population of the people who played Classic. Not necessarily people who played on private servers or people who were hardcore raiders in vanilla, right? You take the Method guys, for example, like uh, Sko, I, I think Sko <laughs> completed Nax. Yeah, he completed Nax in, uh, in vanilla WoW. You know, it's not gonna be a lot of guys like that. Uh, there's gonna be some guys like that for sure. Uh, there's gonna be some guys that are private server guys for sure, but it's, uh, I think the overall community the, the biggest chunk of the community is people who either just missed it and played in the original trilogy or uh people who started playing but but didn't really get to max level whenever uh whenever vanilla was actually there yeah, yeah. i definitely think I, I would probably bet that that the majority of classic players will have not played it before ever mm -hmm. yeah. 80 mm -hmm. to 90 percent easily i would say it's going to be a huge majority i mean just think about it like what 12 million people maybe 15 million people in total probably played vanilla back in the day not counting like the concurrent subs and like how many people have played wow like over 200 million or something i read that once so it's like just by that virtue you're gonna have like 80 to 90 percent of people that have never touched it before and a lot of them are gonna enjoy it i mean even the young kids i remember reading the nostalgia post-mortem like what was like a third of the people that played on that server mm -hmm. were between the ages of like 13 to like 20 or something like they were probably too young to ever play it when it was actually live but a lot of people you know even the younger audiences seem to like it so mm -hmm. yeah definitely uh, i think it's more of just because it's like a different style of game like it is that more yeah. old school rpg style game and it's kind of morphed into this but like back then you had to you know you had to click on each individual flight path it's those little like inconveniences <laughs> yeah. That a lot of people remember, even like not as many graveyards being around, or uh, you know, just having to walk everywhere, and you know, it just it slows everything down. When you slow it down, you start to appreciate everything around you right. a little bit more. Yeah, and de that definitely contributes to the satisfaction of of accomplishing a goal because you know this was really annoying or inconveniencing to work through the steps to accomplish the goal, but I finally worked through it and accomplished it. Mm -hmm. But that's that's a funny thing. Tips brings up. There's going to be a lot of people playing classic that weren't even born when vanilla wow was out yeah <laughs> talking like yeah. 10 11 12 year olds like we're, there's gonna be kids playing yeah well like one of my uh so so in in raid three one of my uh, officers his son and him play wow together and i mean he like he's in college now i think he's a i think he's a sophomore junior in college now but uh it's it, like he grew up with wow like he was like five years old and he just like would you know sit at the computer and just like wasd and just had no idea what he was doing but he played a little bit of vanilla again not having any idea what he's doing and eventually like got to the point where he's like really good and he got gladiator and stuff uh i think a couple times this last expansion but there's people like that where they they've grown up with the game and they just they want to go back and they want to experience it for real right mm -hmm. i, I guess that's, that's really kind cool. of what i want to do too is i want to just go back and replay that nostalgia just to kind of clarify if it's either my rose tinted glasses or whatever they say it is or if it's actually how it was yeah so uh, it's, it's one of those things where you basically you want to go back and finish and i think a lot of people are like that too where they they didn't get to finish and they want to go back and beat the game i uh, i actually went and so I, I love kingdom hearts but i never actually finished the first kingdom hearts and a while back you know, like I, I, I rented it and I, I got to the very last world and I didn't finish. But a while back, uh, I went and got it again and I went and played through the whole thing. And it was so satisfying to actually go back and finish Kingdom Hearts 1 after like, you know, I think 14 years, 13 years that it had been out. And I, I think a lot of people kind of want the same thing with Vanilla Wild. The difference is, is that you can't really go back and uh, you can't really go back and pick it up legit and, and go through and play it again. And uh, I think that's that's what's going to be so awesome about Classic for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, it's just, can you imagine, like, if every time J.K. Rowling released the new Harry Potter book, the previous Harry Potter book would suddenly disappear from, like, all shelves <laughs> for years, you know? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like, we'd just be, like, with Harry Potter 7, just like, wait, what happened in the first book, you know? So it's <laughs> nice, definitely. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. Uh, and even with, like, um, lore wise it was kind of weird because 
when I played Vanilla WoW, I didn't really know anything about the lore. I hadn't even played like a Warcraft RTS game. So this was like all brand new to me. I'm just like, oh, cool, orcs. Oh, cool, goblins, you know? <laughs> when now it's like, oh, here comes Jaina again, freezing shit, you know? <laughs> so, it's, yeah. so it's just a, even a different experience, like story wise. Yeah. Definitely in Vanilla WoW, it was more about like sort of a humble adventurer's journey that culminated into something amazing. And now it, it's like amazement overload. There's always something crazy, like laser cannon, like her, her, her ship flies into shooting like arcane cannons. It's like it's just way over the top. It feels like compared to how it was in Vanilla WoW. Yeah, I think so. Uh, it's I think you're right. I think it was more of like a humble adventurer's journey type of experience. Cause, I mean, and then there was so much more uh, variety. It felt like it's like a oh, molten core. Um, and then you're going to Blackwing Lair, which I mean, that's still in Blackrock Mountain, but then you're like going to Silithus. And I think it's because everything was in that old world that you still felt a little like connected to it wherever you went. Cause you're like, oh yeah, I leveled here. I know there's a raid here or like, I didn't know there was a raid here and stuff like that. So it's, um, I don't know. I just enjoyed traveling all over the world. So when the expansions hit, it's like, you go here now. Like yeah. that is the place you play this, this new now. expansion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but back then it was like you know the the entire world was your game, and so you could just go everywhere and explore. And there's all the different biomes and the different worlds, and it's just sound. It was is different. Yeah, it was cool. It was really cool. So did you uh, when you started playing WoW? You said you started playing WoW because a lot of your friends were playing WoW. Mm -hmm. Did did you play Warcraft or anything before that? Did you play any other MMOs before that? I know you said you played Star Wars Galaxies, but before um, WoW. Before WoW, the only MMO RPG that I played was called MU Online, and it I was an old school Korean Diablo esque game online. It, imagine Diablo but online in Korean. That's pretty <laughs> much this game. So it was just a lot of grinding. It was a game where you would tape your mouse down. <laughs> and you know go do something else uh so playing wow i was like wow this is you know this is it blew my mind because i didn't play anything like i remember um when i first started playing wow i was like wow you gotta pay to play this game like this is <laughs> you know yeah, it's yeah. it yeah. like i don't think i want to play this because I, I gotta pay to play it. but then your friends start playing so you're like on team speaker ventrilo or whatever it's on and then they're like oh my god i just took a zeppelin and now i'm fighting Crocolisks or whatever and i'm like dude i want to fight crocolis <laughs> <laughs> you know it's, it's like you don't know anything you just you hop on a zeppelin you're in stranglethorn but for all you know you're just you're just on this little adventure of like wow i'm level 10 and i just took a zeppelin and i'm in a whole new world and i'm getting attacked yeah That's so it's awesome. that whoa uh, the, mis I the the mystery behind it was kind of fun as well i remember coming from from old school runescape like way back and we're talking 2004 um, and then transitioning to WoW, and like as a kid, my mind was blown because I didn't even know that computer games could have graphics that good. Because RuneScape yeah, looked okay. terrible, right? It was mm -hmm. like such a giant visual upgrade. Like my mind was absolutely annihilated. <laughs> yeah, going from like point to click to like thirty abilities on your action bar, if not more, and like being able to buy a mount and stuff like that. It just like I came from old. I, I came from RuneScape Classic, and it was just like the upgrade was just insane, you know. Hmm. Rip yeah. RuneScape Classic, by the way. <laughs> hey, uh, real quick, McConnell just hosted us. McConnell, thank you so much for the host, dude. I, I really, really appreciate that. Can, can, can we get some? Can we get some uh, hearts from McConnell for for Mick consistent? Can we do that. That'd be good. That'd be real good. Dude, I have uh, one McConnell story. <laughs> oh, so, okay. I think after I fished with Asmund Gold. Um, I learned who McConnell was, and one time he showed up in my chat, and all he said was repeatedly, ban me, I bet you won't ban me, I and said that, and then we banned him, and he never came back. So, I mean, <laughs> we did what he wanted, and, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> that's so great, McConnell. That's great, dude. That's great. Yeah, that's so great. <laughs> <laughs> so uh okay so so how when when did you actually like not when but but how or why did you start getting into machinima because you, you started in wrath oh yeah mm -hmm. how, like um, how did you how did you start getting into that what kind so of like back led then, that? um there was a lot of old school machinima or oxhorn was one of them mm -hmm. um 
Rurikara is another. There's just a lot of people that where they do it, but it's more of a hobby because it was you couldn't make money off of it yet. Right. Uh, so obviously, not many people were doing it. Even though everybody nowadays is like, "Oh man, if it weren't for the, uh, <laughs> you know, I would keep doing this forever." And it's like, ah, I don't know if you would. <laughs> and so, um, uh, yeah, back then, I was like, you know what? A lot of these people aren't even making. Uh, videos anymore and I really enjoy these wow videos I really enjoyed the wow machinimas and everything like that and so I was like you know what I'm just gonna do it myself and so I just did and that was kind of the uh, the reason I got into making wow machinimas was just because I wanted more and nobody was making any <laughs> did you have a video editing background or do you sort of have to pick up these skills as you like uh, oh, I videos? had no no video editing background whatsoever yeah. If uh, if you've watched any of my videos prior, if you, actually if you've just watched any of my videos, <laughs> you will very well see that I have no background <laughs> in video editing. Um, but I mean, my first ever video I remember I made with Windows Movie Maker, and it was um, it was bad. Like I did a stream where I went back and I watched my old videos, and anything before 2012 ish, just like I cringe visibly as i watch it 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 pains me but then i kind of i kind of got progressively better at it um and then you know there's still people that are far superior at like video editing and stuff like nixium nixium is insane with machinimas if you watch yeah, like nixium is. i'm like wow he tried teaching me adobe after effects uh, one time and i was like dude it's it's you're not getting anywhere with this <laughs> you know but i think uh it's it's become my style almost my like really shitty video editing um so i mean i embrace it uh, it's funny I, I always think like if i had got into streaming or youtube just any sort of content creation uh you know however many years ago right mm -hmm. it's like people are like oh like you know if you if you start a long time ago like oh well you get in early and you're like in on the ground floor or whatever but i think like if i had done it like five years ago i i probably would have been like terrible I, <laughs> yeah. one i would have probably said something that would get me in trouble now that's one <laughs> <laughs> two i i just i don't think i would have had like the social skills and just the like the ability to be personable like stuff like that that i learned like from doing real life for a few years I, like I think I just would have been boring. I don't know. <laughs> like I don't think I, was, I would have been there. Yeah, I was very socially awkward. I was, you know, <laughs> I never left my house, never got outside. So I mean, making those videos, you know, I didn't know how to, you know, act or uh, react with interactions and like he like hello friends, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know that type of thing. So yeah. I mean, like when I went to BlizzCon in 2011, that was like the first real, like social. Uh, thing i'd went like the first like big party right like woo that i'd been to and so i remember that because there's videos of me from blizzcon 2011 being visibly nervous as i like <laughs> blinked a lot like i would i would do this in a lot of the videos where i just keep blinking <laughs> i didn't even know that i was doing that um and that was in a lot of just like interviews and stuff and i said awkward thing like i remember somebody interviewed me and they're like what's your favorite game and i was like it is diablo just kidding it is world of warcraft and i was like <laughs> <laughs> it's like why did i say that <laughs> yeah and so like a lot of it's just it's fun to look back it's like you watch yourself grow just as a person and so it's kind of i mean it's fun to go back and do that but like you know it's it's not fun at the same time <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh by the way guys I, i've seen a few uh i've seen a few questions in the chat we'll get to we'll, we'll get to q a at the end here uh we do have uh we don't have super long because uh, Credor actually has to leave, uh, re you know, relatively soon. But, uh, mm. you know, compared to like a really long podcast. But we, we are going to get to a Q&A eventually before before Credor has to leave. Um, I got to go to the doctor per uh, my weekly visit at this point. I've gotten everything ripped off of me and out of me this year. It's been very fun, let me tell you. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> I see <laughs> I see your face is like, oh, this shit's gone. Oh, my God. Uh, do, you have, do you have Ligma? <laughs> Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna answer that. Um, it's, <laughs> I've gotten. Let me tell you the fun thing. I had my gallbladder out in February. I had my toenails removed last month. Both my big toenails. Um, and it's just. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, when you get a catheter put in, not many things 
uh, can top that in terms of fun. Oh, it, uh, it sounds it sounds like a great time. <laughs> yeah, sensational. Yeah. It's sensational. Oh, man, so, that's rough. Uh, I'm just I'm trying to get back to being healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, is what I've been trying to do for the rest of this year because it's like not having a gallbladder. The toenail story is like pretty much what <laughs> pretty much what happened is like my big toenails, right? If this was my toenail, like the the nail got pushed back, and so the entire like nail bed got inflamed. I don't oh. even know how I did it, but like apparently they're like, oh yeah, a lot of joggers get this, and a lot of uh, I don't know, like athletes and stuff like that. I'm neither of those. So I was like, I don't know how I got this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I guess it was probably my shoes fit badly or something. Yeah. Uh, so then that got infected and they're like, just soak your feet in Epsom salt water. I'm like, okay. So I did that. It didn't do anything. All right. Surprise. Of course. And so they're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like, we're going to have to, uh, you know, take those off. And so they, they numb your toe and they take them off. Honestly, it's not that bad. The nail grows back, so you know it's not like it's gone forever. Oh, well, that's too bad. And I was gonna say you don't have to clip your nails anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it was easier than the gallbladder surgery, at least. But yeah, just I'm tired of I'm tired of uh, constantly dealing with medical things. I'm only like 29. I yeah. mean, it was one of those things where, like, you know, growing up with like YouTube and everything, you're like, hey, I'm doing great. And then like all the old YouTube people I'd work with, like, just wait. Wait till you get old, <laughs> which you know they're like in their thirties. So right? it's like, uh, man, I need to not sit in a chair all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't even remember what we were talking about. I just went on one of my <laughs> random tangents. <laughs> so um, we we were talking about being socially awkward. I guess. Do you think this just oh, yeah. a thought that popped in my head? Do you think that classic players are less socially awkward than retail players, considering how? socially engaging the game is like what, what do you think about that um that's a good point because i do remember classic wow being more of a social experiment or yeah. a, a social experiment a social experience because um e each server was essentially like its own little world you know and so in classic wow it's like oh uh i logged in today and i see the same guy every day when i log into orgrimmar in the morning like there's uh you know you didn't know him as jim but it's like there's Torgar. Right. Oh, hey, Torgar's at the auction house again, just like he is every day at 10 a.m. So it's like those little things kind of made uh, this experience that much more social. I guess it, it can translate over to real life, but I don't know, you know, the science and the psychology behind it all, but I'm sure it has helped a lot of people. Yeah. I, I think it's funny, like... <sighs> So so NMP Nick Palm went on a he had a he had a rant a little short rant that was on live stream fail uh, about a month ago about how in retail wow right now you never have like a real like personal experience with anybody and he was like doing a quest or something and somebody came by to help him and like the, like he's actually talking about it he's talking about how like you know like you don't see this anymore like nobody really like tries to help anybody and then the guy in game mm -hmm. is like hey like you know you don't see many like not, like literally almost the exact same thing that he was <laughs> saying in the game and he's yeah. like there it is like th and it was somebody who uh said they were new to the game so it was like he was just yeah. kind of the person who was new to the game was just kind of confused he was like yeah i don't know like I, I never really get to talk to anybody even though it's an mmo like i just kind of like mm -hmm. do my thing so it's cool that like they were having yeah. a conversation like that was like a real connection that that he had with somebody through the video game but, yeah, because it's like um, now it's you, you click a button and you can do whatever you want. Like uh, raid, click <laughs> uh, dungeon, click PvP, click. Yeah, yeah. You're low. Just, it's like you're going to the freaking, you're, you're doing Uber Eats. It's like, hey, uh, yeah, I'd like yeah, one yeah. raid, please. Thank yeah. you. And it just like it comes right to your door, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even pay $50 <laughs> 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 one mount, please. Yeah, exactly. um, and I don't even think it's a terrible thing. I just think it's different, but I do wish there was still the option to have that. Like, Oh, these are the, you know, the non cross realm servers. I think that'd be cool if they even had non cross realm servers, just even if it was like 10 of them yeah. or something. Yeah, I, I do. I do think that's how RP servers still operate like that. Don't they? There's no phasing. Isn't that oh, right? Yeah. There is no phase, but you, you still have the queues and stuff like that. Right, and you can still invite someone over to your realm if you're if they're in your in your party. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I think like there's a big misconception out there. A lot of people I hear a lot of people say this that the modern gamer just is not as social, and it's not that you know the modern game is less social than vanilla. Mm -hmm. It's that people today no longer want to talk to each other and stuff like that. 
I mean, I honestly couldn't disagree more. I just think the systems and, you know, how Vanilla used to incentivize you grouping up with people and talking to people and meeting people, those systems have been stripped from the game. Yeah. When you put yeah. in a queue into the game, all of a sudden nobody has to talk to anybody else because they can just put a push a button. You know, when you put all this different, I guess, these streamlined features into the game, it takes away from the incentive or the requirement to talk to other people. But when you see people actually engaging in the social aspects of the game, like yesterday S found on your stream when we did that big raid, mm -hmm. like you see people, they're hyped up in the chat. You know, they've never done a 40 man raid on Orgrimmar or Storm yeah. or whatever. Like they want to do it. They want to do mm -hmm. it and they get so amped when it happens, even though they've never done it before. And it's like, it's not that the gamer has changed. You know, 10 years of gaming habits has not undone, you know, thousands of years of human psychology. People mm -hmm. still want to be around other people at the end of the day. They want to experience things socially. It's just about creating systems that cater to that psychological need. And yeah. those systems have been stripped away, I think. I think nice. the perfect example is Draenor with the garrisons. And everybody always references uh, Draenor like, oh, Draenor is the worst. And it, it was the worst because it forced you to play the single player game. Yep. And that's like the exact opposite of WoW, uh, what WoW is supposed to be. Yep. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. Go, go ahead, stay safe. I was gonna say, like tips, tips. You said it really well. Players definitely respond to incentives, and human psychology has not changed. Yeah. Oh, oh we yeah. lost you. Stay safe. We lost you. You hear me? Hello. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Human psychology hasn't changed. You're absolutely right. But the the incentivization system has changed. Like before, you were incentivized. Like you could you couldn't really do anything uh, in vanilla WoW if you weren't communicating, negotiating, associating, you know, affiliating, whatever whatever we want to use uh, with other players. Teamwork was crucial, and now. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you can you can do almost bar high level arena, high level mythic plus and mythic rating. You can probably do everything in, in retail WoW without ever talking to anyone. You know, yeah, mm -hmm. and that's that's totally a 180 from how the game used to be. And and people are going to take the path of least resistance just naturally, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's like there's there's high end mythic content. There's all that stuff, sure. But with Titan forging and all this other stuff that's been added into BFA that classic does not have or, or retail that classic does not have. Um, people are going to get that same sort of feeling of like completing like oh it's like i have seen all the content right i've seen all of antorus in in legion and i have i i i'm in a raiding guild but i don't raid with a guild i just do like viewer raids and, and lfr and stuff like that i think it's weird that i've completed the highest tier of content as far as like being able to see everything um like playing as casually as I do when it comes to like a rating perspective, I think that's weird. And it's like, oh, well, you didn't do mythic. It's like, yeah, I know. But like that, my my point is, it still stands. Like I'm talking about vi like physically going into the raid and seeing all the bosses. I don't know. I think uh, that's it's weird. It's not as rewarding. Yeah. Well, I think it uh it depends on what your end goal is. If your end goal is to just see all the content, like you'll be happy with LFR. You'd be like, well, I saw it all. Right. But if your end goal is to like, I know I want the most challenging experience, mm -hmm. then you're like, okay, well, I want to do mythic rating. Right. I've always kind of been somewhere in between, which is why I really enjoyed vanilla WoW rating because it was uh, it was kind of hardcore in a way because there's so many people or so many things happening. Uh, but I almost feel like the mechanics are probably more complex now because they've had so much time yeah. to like you know iron out everything and get all little details down. But it was still crazy when back then you know you're killing a molten core boss and after you spend like weeks doing it you finally kill it and you're like oh my god you yeah. can move on like it's just <laughs> yeah it's crazy yeah. yeah one of my biggest gripes with the game today is that you're unable to experience the most challenging content without putting in like months and months of monotonous grinding or like just you know rng based time gates that you have to leap over like back in vanilla you want to challenge yourself at level five okay go pull three mobs as a warrior have a good time you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you want to challenge yourself? Go try to solo more Ladim at the appropriate level. Like, there's so many ways to challenge yourself during the leveling process and to actually get a rush out of it, to actually, like, encounter something dangerous. Whereas now it's like, I want to do Mythic, but first I have to wait for these RNG legendaries to drop for me. I have to wait until I finish, you know, this time-gated quest line and Suramar and all this stuff. Um, I know a lot of that's been taken away from BFA, and that's a great thing, but it's like... It feels like if you want to play at the most competitive level, uh, if you want to challenge yourself, you're somehow unable to do so without investing, you know, not necessarily time into the game, but without investing subscriptions and waiting for time gates to pass <laughs> before you can actually get to that content.
Yeah, yeah. I just uh, I didn't really like any of the time gating things. It reminded me of Animal Crossing, but the thing with Animal Crossing is I don't have to pay a subscription for it, and I play it on my <laughs> DS where I'm like, all right, I did my like three things for the day. I'll wait, you know, 24 hours. With WoW, I'm like, you know, I'm supposed to be able to play this all the time. I'm supposed to, you know, I'm not supposed to be like, oh well, I gotta wait two weeks to get my. Uh. Yeah. It's right. Just, just uh, it's a bad taste in my mouth after playing all that. Yeah, and and yeah. I think like. And uh, so, so in classic, I mean, there there are things that it's like, yeah, it's going to take you time, but uh, it's a little bit different whenever it's like, for example, like I'm I'm trying to get my army of the light rep up on on Legion, and uh, or in BFA or whatever right now in retail, and I, I want the Lightbringer title. That's what I want. I want I want Espan the Lightbringer, and uh, I basically like I as far as I know, it's just I have to go and do these daily quests over and over again. And it's like I can do a finite number of things, and I, they reset every day. And it's like, sure, that's great, but as far as I know, there, there's not more that I can do to do it faster. And uh, I don't know there, there seems to be a lot of that in, in the current game. Yeah, I think there's a big difference, like in in having content intentionally time gated that you can only like do like like you just said, you can only do so much per day, and then content that just takes a really long time, like it does in vanilla WoW, like mm -hmm. ranking or farming whatever rep or farming whatever you're trying to do. I think one, you know, the way Vanilla Wab did it, it might even take longer, but it like every step of the way feels more rewarding because every day you're chipping. Like I, I don't know, like what do you guys think? It, the, the the Vanilla Wab feel definitely feels way more rewarding for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, one of the things I thought about with that is like talents, and I always thought it was rewarding when you level up. Every level, you can spend a talent point, and I'm yeah. like, all right, great. Even if it's one percent crit. I feel yep. I still feel like I'm progressing towards something like nice. They got one percent more crit. Well, now you level up and you don't get anything. It's like well, you don't you don't get another talent for another fifteen levels. And it's like I wouldn't even care if they had like a big talent tree and it was like pick a color and I'm like red and it's like good job you're red <laughs> like yeah and it didn't mean anything but I'd feel like at nice. least there was I'd something like, there. You know, <laughs> They'd be like, nice, I'm red. <laughs> like, this is awesome. It just feels like you've earned something. And I feel like that's what Vanilla Wild did so well, is it made you feel like you earned everything that you got. Yeah. It, it's so funny that you say that, because I, I talk about this all the time. And I think uh, I think I might have talked about it on the last Classic Cast. But in Vanilla WoW, you're, you're feeling that constant state of progression by getting a bunch of small wins. That's what I just call them small wins. Like, you level, yeah. you got a talent point. You, you do this, you do that. You, there's there's a lot of, like, small, like, mini progressions that you have from level 1 all the way to level 60. Like, you always feel like you're doing something. The It's a grind, sure, but that grind is rewarding within the grind as opposed to just rewarding at the end. And I, I think that they added a lot of grindy stuff into, uh, into Legion. And a lot of people are like, oh, like, oh, the grinding is stupid and this and that. Like, people who, who might not be interested in Classic. And... Uh, I actually think a lot of the grindy stuff that they did in Legion was kind of stupid because they, they didn't do the grind the right way. It wasn't a rewarding grind. I mean, even leveling, like so many people consider leveling to be completely trivial at this point because it's like why, like, I mean, it, there, there's no real content. There's no real sense of progression throughout the leveling process. I get a talent every 15 levels and it, it seems like such a waste of time, right? Mm. Uh, I think that, you know, th to the point where actually, I think in the last Q&A, Ian Hatzkostas mentioned that They've considered the thought. They don't know how they would do it, but they've actually considered the thought of eventually doing a level squish, which mm. is like, yeah. I mean, that would is that a band aid fix? I don't know. Would that counteract the the feeling of not having those small wins throughout the the course of the game? I don't know, but uh, it's interesting that they've noticed that and they've they've brought that up themselves that there's just too many levels. Um, yeah. yeah. No, go go ahead. Sorry. Um. It almost feels like leveling is because it's like there's been so many expansions and then uh, like you have all these levels and you go through all these expansions. It's almost like they're forcing you in a way to be like, you know what, just uh, just buy the boost, just buy that sixty dollar <laughs> yeah, boost. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. And I bought the sixty dollar boost, so yeah, I'm, I'm dude, I, I fell <laughs> so, for it too. Yeah. When it when it boils down to it, they're a business, and as they've grown as a company and learned more about how to make games they've also learned more about how to make money right and more about psychology and marketing and everything and so then you get act division you know yeah. sitting up there behind them like yeah get us that 60 dollars boost get them yeah. get those mounts you know it's just <laughs> it's it's a it's a different game in that aspect too 
Yeah. Well, I mean, it's funny if you think about it. I mean, it's sixty dollars to get one hundred ten levels. If you <laughs> work, you know, let's say you make ten dollars an hour, that's six hours. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting to one ten in six hours. You know. Yeah. So it's one of those things where it's like effectively it makes sense. It is. Yeah, um, it is what it is. Well, it's yeah. like even back then, you know, you didn't have DLC, you didn't have but like mounts, you didn't have like any of these things. It was just like you had the game, and that's all you had. And so I think they tried to keep you playing and grinding a lot back then, just through the subscription, because it's like, all right, we make our money through subscriptions, you know. We, yeah. But that's. Well, like all those games, like EverQuest, I know it did that too. Like a lot of those old games did. But now there's just so much, so many more ways that they can get your money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That it's it's very visible if you just kind of look at it. Wake yeah. up, sheeple. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Like the effect of real money transactions, like as they became more socially acceptable, <laughs> like how companies have just, you know, you give them an inch, they take a mile sort of thing where there's slowly crossing the lines and crossing the borders every single day what was unacceptable like i remember when, when the celestial steed came out do you remember like the uproar like on the forums mm. and just like youtube videos about it oh my god this is horrible for the game now it's like dude you can buy level boost you can buy gold you can buy whatever you want and all these things would have been considered pay to win back in the day but now it's just like well it's more it's it's pay for convenience it's not pay to mm. win you know yeah. and the, the line just consistently yeah. gets crossed yeah, I, I have no problem with uh, I have no problem with like cosmetic stuff. Mm -hmm. Like if it's like a non combat pet or this or that, it's kinda like, okay, it is what it is, right? For for what retail wow is. It's like, okay, sure. But uh I I don't know, as as it gets into like actual pay to win, that's uh, it's always really, really bad for the game. And uh I don't I, I don't think it's quite there yet, but uh I mean, you can kind of say that about about maybe the leveling boosts, but well, there's the argument that they I don't know how true this. This is a pretty conspiracy tinfoil hatty, but that yeah. they intentionally, you know, unbalance or rebalance races to incentivize race changes. <laughs> Who knows, dude? I don't know. <laughs> but I, I was gonna say definitely. I I bet that they probably make more money today than they did, you know, at the end of Wrath or at the start of Cataclysm when their sub numbers were peaking up. I bet they, they probably do. make more money mm -hmm. today. They do. Yeah. They report it in their earnings. WoW's more profitable today than it's ever been. Yeah. Wow, yeah. yeah. So so let's talk about this for a second. And th this has come up a few times, but uh, if uh, you know, people have talked about like if they put a store into Classic WoW, right? Whenever WoW Classic comes out, if they if they have like a store for whatever, like name changes, race changes, stuff like this. Mm -hmm. um, I hope that they don't do that personally. I, I really hope that they don't do that. And because uh, there was some things like there was server transfers in Vanilla WoW. I, I had one. Now, I believe it was a free mm. server transfer due to population, but I yeah. don't know when they added the paid stuff. I think Burning uh, Crusade for server transfers. Although was I'm not it Burning sure. Crusade? Yeah, I, I, I can't remember. Um, That's a good point. I don't actually I, remember when it was. I, I think it was like within the last six months of Vanilla WoW, actually. Yeah, because that's yeah. whenever I got my free transfer. So but they, they, might had, have they done had a, a ton of rules related I to do, it. I uh, do. Mm -hmm. I remember the end of Vanilla was when they started. It, actually, yeah, it might have been the end of Vanilla because I remember um, they started announcing a lot of, uh, you know, edgy type of things at that point. Like, hey, guys, what if we, uh, you know, everybody could play Shaman in a Paladin? And everyone's <laughs> like, what? <laughs> that's, that's not a thing. Not, and yeah, they're like, weird. yeah, you know, we'll just do that. And then... Uh, yeah, some new races throw them in there. What if, uh, you know, you could transfer, you know, they start like slowly pushing their boundaries at that point. And I think that's when it, they really started getting into all the additional profit profit measures or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that uh, I personally hope that they don't add anything like that. I really don't. I honestly think that they won't. I, I don't think that they will. Uh, but. Like you said, they they are a business, and it's something that uh, I think people have a natural concern about it, because it it probably is going to affect the game to some extent. Again, I don't I don't quite have a problem with like the cosmetic stuff, but if they're adding in cosmetic stuff, well, that's not vanilla. That wasn't stuff that was in the game. So like, mm. I, I don't think they should do any of that. It's like sure, yeah. like it's not something that's going to affect the game like balance or whatever as far <laughs> as like having a store mount, but. They said vanilla is vanilla, and a lot of people hope they're just going to keep it that way. 
Yeah. This is something this is something I hear every single day just about. Someone suggesting that, you know, if you collect, you know, Ashbringer or corrupted Ashbringer in classic wild, you should be able to get that transmog in retail. Yeah. So crossover transmog, what do you think about that? <laughs> Hell no, dude. Just That's keep no it separate. Keep keep it yeah. separate. Like what well, what's the point of that? You know what I mean? You trivialize that content in retail and then you, you kind of make it less valuable in vanilla. It's like yeah. dude, I'm not I'm not trying to log in and see freaking Shanzo or whatever that little bear thing is. <laughs> in this store running in front of me you know it's like just keep the two things separate it's just please please yeah, and yeah. i think one of, one of the cool things about the the classic community is i'm pretty sure if something like that happened there would be a pretty significant amount of pushback i think in general uh uh the classic community when it comes to kind of preserving the game um, especially since g allen brack said that was the goal for this entire project i think people would get really up in arms if they saw some kind of cash shop um, I mean, I know I'd make a video about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think the, uh, as far as cash shop goes, I think that's not good. Uh, name change is a bad one. Name change is a really bad one because in, in vanilla, wow, your reputation is everything. Mm -hmm. And if you, yep. if you're in a situation yep. where like somebody goes and like they ninja loot, they do this, they do that. Like, uh, I mean, I'll tell you right now, there was a horde player. There was a horde player. This is this is about uh, this was back whenever I was doing my old my old streaming stuff on YouTube. There's a horde player, uh, a shaman who ninja Neltharian's tier. A lot of guilds, what they might do is they might go free for all loot, and mm -hmm. just kind of like, okay, hey, you go get your stuff, and you can trust your guildies. You're supposed to be able to trust your guildies because you're trying to speed run or whatever. An el an enhancement, sorry, an elemental shaman went and ninja Neltharian's tier off of Nefarian and yeah. quit the guild, logged out, whatever. And I don't know the story exactly behind why he did it because he stopped playing altogether. He stopped playing that character altogether and didn't just re-roll a character. He re-rolled <laughs> on an alliance side as a paladin after that. So it's like his, his reputation was so tarnished that he was like he couldn't even play his character anymore. It was that yeah. crazy. Is there is there an item in, in Classic WoW that you would pay for a server transfer for to ninja the item? So you ninja admin, you server transfer. Is there is there an item that would be worth it for you guys? <laughs> yeah, dude, corrupted Ashbringer. Dude. <laughs> really, you ninja and then bounce, okay? Dude, uh, I, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, no, no, no. no, no, I, uh, no. I actually uh, accidentally <laughs> ninjaed something back in the day. Accidentally. Accident. <laughs> accident. No, 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 I'm just kidding. Which, I'm just kidding. And it makes it uh, that much worse because of what it was. So. We were in Blackwing Lair, mm -hmm. and we killed Broodlord. And I remember I was just like <gasps> talking to my friend on the phone, and just like not paying attention. And so I was like, "Oh, it's a quest item," and I no! picked up Broodlord's head. <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> and I was oh. like, "Oh, sweet, I got his head." And everyone was like, "The shit did you just do?" <laughs> and I was like, "What?" <laughs> and then they're like, "You took Broodlord's head," and I'm like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Read it," and it's like, you know, only one may loot this head, and I'm like, "Dude." Oh, <laughs> so I uh, I lost DKP, and so I couldn't get like gear for like a week or two. Dude, and, uh... oh god. Okay, so for those of you guys who don't know, that that head of Broodlord, Broodlord Lash Layer, you need it for the the AQ swept Scepter quest chain, and you can only get one per raid lockout per week, and that's a so only one person in your raid can complete that stage of the quest to keep going in order to ring the gong and get the uh, the black Karaji, uh, wh Battle whatever tank. it's called, Battle Tank, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the legendary mount from AQ-40. So basically, Krendor, uh <laughs> he totally cucks somebody from getting the mount. <laughs> yeah, I did. And uh, I still have it to this very day in my bank. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. So, so I was like, I'm not going to grind for this. So I don't really care. I'm not going to get it. And oh, so it's man. just in my bank. Yeah. Oh, that's so, so great, dude. That's so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, that was just my, my one. So uh, I missed out on getting all my tier uh, tier two pieces because of that. I got like... Yeah, I'm not surprised. Like, like three or four of the pieces and I never got like the fourth or fifth, whatever it was. Uh, dude. But uh, made a good story. Dude, I cannot <laughs> imagine if I had been your guild leader. I would have been so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's oh, the thing, too. It's like, you know, you can't just log out and be like, see you later. <laughs> but yeah. Like, it's like, you know, that's the whole server. You can get blacklisted. You can get yeah. screwed. So it's like, well, yeah. I mean, he's got to live with it. Like, Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs>
<laughs> but yeah, like I, I think anything like that, like y- your reputation is so important. Like stuff like name changes, even if it's something that seems so trivial, um, it's not good. Uh, server transfer. If they had paid server transfers in vanilla, that's that's one thing. Like, I mean, I know they definitely had them because I got one. Uh, as far as a free one goes, due to population, like Ill- Illidan was overpopulated, so I so I got a free transfer to Keltizad. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, that was definitely uh, that stuff like that's definitely something that's come up a lot. And and like Staysafe said, they, they led into what Staysafe was saying about how, and and this happens to me a lot too. People will come into our chats and be like, "How how do you feel about that?" Like taking classic wow as an extension of kind of that completionist you know doing all the things uh type of gameplay that people have come up with for for retail wow and the thing that's so bad about that the thing that's so bad about being able to do that is people are going to want to get gear not even for the sake of getting the gear for their character and continue playing there you're basically yeah. taking these people who want to play that way and they really want to corrupt that ashbringer on their main to go through and do everything in classic and not only that they're taking stuff away from somebody else who's actually going to want to use that in classic there's going to be i I guarantee you there's going to be people who are just going to want it like it's going to be a hunter that's going to want a corrupted ashbringer so that he has the transmog active so he can use it on his warrior in retail you know (laughs) that's what it's going to be i really (laughs) dislike that crossover but I, i think also at the same time like if you're even in a position to be looting or to be loot counseled a corrupted ashbringer you're invested, right? Like some idiot is just not just going to randomly get one, right? That's true. Yeah. Well, uh, you've, true. You've put in the time at that point. True. There is there is a hunter on retail. I can't remember what his name is, but he has a corrupted Ashbringer. Uh, he made a YouTube <laughs> video about it. So yeah. So well, I, I remember actually on Keltuzad there was a hunter with corrupted Ashbringer, but he got it in Burning Crusade. Um, I can't remember who it was. I think it was in. I can't remember. But uh, but yeah, no, I've I've seen that before too. But like my my point still stands. It's like. Now, like somebody who's in a loot council has that power over somebody in the raid who's going to use it for PvP yeah. or something, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and I, think, I think none of that's uh, – that, that, that's no good. I think that's so bad. But, yeah. Um, for, for the record, real quick, I do want to say that, you know, all these are like hypotheticals. Based on the dev water cooler update and like yeah. the software engineer position that opened – I'm pretty confident. Like, I'm no longer scared anymore. You know what I mean? I, some of these are, like, really big F-ups if, if Blizzard does them. I think they're very conscious of what the community wants, and hopefully they'll they'll steer <laughs> clear of a lot of this stuff, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think so, too. And I think it's still just going to be, like, a subscription, and that's it. You know, just kind of like how it used to be. You know, you pay your $15, and you get to play the game, and there's yeah. nothing else. Yeah. And I think that's, that's what it should be. Mm-hmm. Do you guys think? Do you guys think player behavior in early vanilla is going to be really bad with ninja looting? And one thing, one thing I'm anticipating is a lot of Leroy Jenkins people. In, oh, in, dude, uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to plug you. It's going to be terrible. I'm, everybody's yeah, going to yeah. do it, and everybody's going to think the funniest person in the world. Yep. Yeah. Like, yep. I'm like, guys, I saw this video from like ten years ago. <laughs> like, dude, you're all. Oh, we know. We all. Hey, we all know the joke. Okay, we all get it. That's so funny, dude. <laughs> have it's you seen? Happen. Have you seen the Family Guy remake of that? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Man. Oh yes. I actually, uh, I actually messaged Leroy in oh, WoW yeah. back in Vanilla WoW because I had characters on his realm on Alliance, which was Laughing Skull. And yeah. I remember because I'd see the Pals for Life guild all over, and so. uh I remember, you know, I was like, what, like 14, 15. So I was like, Leroy, that was a very funny video. <laughs> and he was just like, hey, thanks, bud. And I was like, wow, like, I talked to Leroy on the head, Jenkins. Move along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just, you know, I was that annoying kid. That's um, so great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, like, hey, thanks, bud. <laughs> it's like, like, carry on now. Keep playing your baseball. Like, thanks, mister. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's, that dude must have gotten so many messages and tells oh, yeah. just being like love the video man love the video yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, that's awesome I'm, de- I'm definitely anticipating though a lot of ninja looting early on in, in classic before people realize like the name the negative ramifications of it i think it'll happen all the time yeah there's just yeah. gonna be a lot of general ignorance that's gonna spur <laughs> this stuff on i mean a lot of it like just ninjaing in general like i've ninja a couple items in the past i just didn't understand you know i didn't understand loot priority i didn't understand you know well, there's a, there's a dice on my screen too. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like uh, kind of yeah. that, that those cultural norms have to set in. I think. I mean, Ninja technically exists today, but it oh actually, my god, does it, even, just... does it even anymore with the personal loot? Yeah, I, have I no guess idea. not really. I just yeah. had a flashback to a fun story. So I was in, what was it? Strat home, uh, not live Strat home, undead Strat. 
Uh, and I was a hunter, which was like the hunter I made a lot of my machinima stuff with. And I remember I was like gearing up. I got my ancient bone bow and skull of mates. I was like, all right, this is going good. And then I went here and I was trying to get my tier 0 0.5, like the beast stalker. Oh, right, right. Is that what it was called? I think uh, it's zero. That, that's yeah, zero. Yeah, zero. So I was trying to get that and I, the boots dropped and I'd ran this place so many times. I was like, oh yes, I got the boots. And some shitty ass shaman oh, rolled no. and got those boots. And I was like, hey, those are hunter boots. And he's like, I can wear them. <laughs> and he won them. And he took them. And I feel like that's made me hate shaman to this very day. Dude. That just seated, like <laughs> subtle subconscious hatred you just because of that one guy. And it's one of those things where, like, now you're like, oh, yeah, you know, hunters get the hunter gear, blood. but it was back then. It's like, yeah, I can use this roll. I got it, even though it's your set. Yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> that was me with the Valor gear. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, yeah. But here's the thing, dude. Valor gear is Paladin gear. Like, warriors should just, like, wear greens. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I actually raided with a, a Fury Warrior back then, and like barely any people raided as a Fury Warrior, and he just had like full rogue gear. Yeah, that's yeah, just what he yeah, did. like Devil Sword leather and stuff like that. Well, yeah. it's funny that you say that. So, uh, I remember it like that too. Like now, people have figured out, like you know, after you know, once you're in 1.12 and everybody has all their talents and stuff redone and all this stuff, Fury Warriors are actually the hardest scaling melee DPS. But mm -hmm. back in the day. I don't remember hardly any warrior DPS. Like, there was just, like, a ton of rogues, a ton of mages, and, like, maybe a couple warriors. But, like, it wasn't mm -hmm. like now. Like, people will go into a freaking MC with, like, ten Fury Warriors now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's insane. So it's 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 really funny, like, how, how the game is, uh, how the game, the knowledge of the game has, has increased just as a whole. Like, everybody knows so much more. So, it, in in essence, the game has evolved even like after it's been done, like po post mortem, <laughs> after yeah, it's yeah, been dead yeah. gone, uh, it's it's evolved. So it's it's really crazy to think about stuff like that. Actually, I think that's part of what people are gonna miss the most. They used to play vanilla WoW like me, is because back then you would do all this and you you didn't know anything. You know, there was no data mining, there was no WoWhead or anything like that. Like you had Thoughtbot, but that was more to be like, where is this quest at? And then you'd know figure it out. But like so many things were just unknown and i think mm -hmm. the unknown aspect of vanilla wow back when you were playing it is like half the fun of vanilla wow when i'd play like for example when i did start uh playing wow that that moment of those like my friends getting off the zeppelin getting killed by crocolis was like whoa where is that how do i go there i want to do that you know and you just you want to experience that um because you're like wow this could be you know anything this is like an adventure you know you're going on this big unknown adventure now it's like one new string of code gets added and they're like could this be this? like they data mine the <laughs> shit out of it and it's yeah. like you know everything before even the news sites know yeah yeah that's so true and i have to tell you man like i've i've leveled up one to 16 vanilla maybe five or six times now in my life and every time I go back and relevel, I learn something new. I find a new quest, or find a new little Easter egg area, or if like I, I'm I, every time I replay, I'm I'm always learning more. And uh, I mean, is that is that true for you guys also, or am I just an idiot? No, absolutely, dude. Yeah. There's, there's always something like yeah. even even as the like the game continues to evolve, and I think it'll continue to evolve even after classic launches. Like there's still so much that's not really known. At the end of the day, what's known now about uh, what's known now about vanilla is based on you know certain private server values and. Maybe those values are different, and maybe that difference impacts itemization. Maybe it impacts, you know, how, how you, you know, which professions choose, stuff like that. So the, the ripple effect come classic is going to be big, and I, and I do think people are going to learn new stuff every day, even those that have been immersed in it the past decade or so, you know? Well, uh, mm -hmm. even, like, one of the old Horde quests, which is the Mancrick's Wife quest in the okay. Barrens, mm -hmm. like, uh, everybody knows it's like a meme now. They're like, where's Mancrick's Wife? I don't know. But, like... <laughs> Back then, the reason it became the meme is because nobody knew where she was, right? Yeah. You would go into Baron's chat, and you'd be like, where is this quest at? Like, I don't know. I can't find his wife. She's nowhere. And then they'd be like, ha-ha, idiot. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, there's no, like, thing telling you, like, oh, she's right over in this area. It's just you wander around, and you look for her. And then that was it. Uh, yeah. So it's just those those types of things are 
like what I remember from Vanilla WoW the most. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want us. I don't want us to go over because I know I know you have to go for your doctor's appointment. Mm. Uh, so I think now would be a good time to go into some Q and A. Uh, like I said earlier, I know that uh, I know I know that a lot of people were asking questions while we were going, but uh, now we're gonna go into some Q and A. So if you guys have any questions, you guys want to tweet at us. We can answer your questions from uh, from Twitter, or you guys can post it in the chat. Either one. Uh, and by the way, guys, real quick, if you haven't already, please, 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 uh, go follow Crendor Tips Out Baby and Stay Safe TV here on Twitch. Uh, their YouTube's, their Twitters, everything's uh, up on the screen. So if you guys could please uh, go do that, and uh, also do that for myself if you haven't already, I would really, really appreciate that. I would really, really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Say. So, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to follow me if you don't want to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just send him yeah, a, a just, uh, email <laughs> telling him that you hate Crendor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude, I swear to God, doing this for so long, you just build up thick skin. Some people I still know that have like done this forever, and they still are like, you know, bothered by a whole bunch of stuff. But like, I remember one time, it was just like a month ago, I was doing the co-optional podcast. Some guy in chat, literally every like two minutes, would be like, "I hate Crendor. Crendor is the worst." <laughs> Why do they have Crendor on? I hate Crendor. And he just keeps saying, people in chat are like, dude, can you just stop? Yeah, it's like, chill, like, dude. We, we heard it. you the you first hate time. Crendor. You hate him. And I'm like, listen, I don't mind that this guy hates me. I don't care. Like, whatever. But it's the fact that he just kept saying it every five minutes for like two hours. And then yeah. finally, I was like, dude, you got to stop. <laughs> like, we get it. All right. And he's like, I've been watching the show for like seven years. And, and I was like, you've been watching the episodes of me for seven years. Yeah. Uh, it just like blew my mind. <laughs> I don't like, know. Dude, you're just going to hate views at that point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> great. You know, what are you going to do? You got, yeah. You're going to, that's just part of doing this as your job or hobby or whatever. means you get people that like you, you get people that don't like you and you move on. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think this is a good question, just because like I, I see this all the time. Not really uh, a question that that uh, maybe needs to be addressed. Uh, Gentry was asking, "How do you feel about add-ons allowed in vanilla?" I I never remember playing add-on or, or WoW without add-ons. Yeah, I, I like I remember like from the beginning, I had like CT mod and I, was I had all this stuff. One? A Titan panel. Yeah, yeah Titan panel. One. I remember I used that. Yeah, so like there, there's been mods like from the very beginning. Like people were developing add-ons, um, like in, in the alpha, I'm sure, because I started playing a week after release, and I and I had them like right away. Actually, it blew my mind because I played Dark Age of Camelot before I played WoW. I played Dark Age of Camelot, and there was nothing like that in Dayok. So like, yeah. I was just like, wait, there's like mods like you can do like weird stuff. And it's like, <laughs> well, they're not like real mods; they're add-ons, you know. So like, I still call mm. them mods all the time, but like, um. I don't know. I, I think uh, I think that's something that's kind of like a big misconception that a lot of people say like there wasn't add-ons in vanilla or like maybe there shouldn't be add-ons in vanilla. I say just keep it the way it was. Like, I mean, there, there's a lot of really really useful mods that um, I don't know. I, I need my damage meters. Like, I, mean, I just I, I yeah. want stuff like that so I can like look at oh, I'm doing this much damage. I'm doing that much. So imagine imagine trying to play without KTM or some sort of threat. Oh my goodness, that's a that good would one. be brutal. Yeah, no threat meter would be really bad. I definitely don't think, uh, I mean, I, at least I don't think the question is, you know, whether or not there should be add-ons. It's Should there be any kind of oversight with certain add-ons of certain add-ons kind of cross the line and, and kind of detract from the spirit of vanilla? Um, and I think it's it just goes back to, to something Blizzard already does. I mean, they already monitor add-ons. If, if certain add-ons break the game, they, uh, they break the add-ons. So I think that's just kind of how it should be, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is, this is just a, this is a nice one from end loss uh what are your guys favorite zones it's a nice oh. nice good boy question um are we talking just in general or like classic uh classic let's go classic i'm gonna okay. add that in for um, him i would probably say either winter spring i've always loved winter spring but i always like snow and just like the chill kind of quiet environment i love how it's kind of purplish too it's almost yeah. like that in real life when it snows it gets kind of purpley yeah in yeah. the sky um and then uh I've always loved Arathi Highlands, which is kind of a oh, weird yeah. zone to like, but I don't know. I've just I like the open plains, like the rolling plains of the Arathi Highlands. Well, I guess it's not it's Highlands, but yeah. you know, no, uh, I yeah, just no, love the, 
yeah, like the green hills. It's just you can like sit out there even at night. Like you put a fire and just chill. I, just, I love the aesthetic of the Arathi Highlands. What about you guys? I feel the same way. Like those two zones. Yeah, probably oh. Winter Spring is my favorite. Same Winter Spring, top top zone. Same. There you go. Good taste. <laughs> yeah, I like you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> There's so uh, many good ones, honestly. Like, it's so hard uh, to pick. Uh, yeah. I really like Tanaris. I don't know, something about it. Just, like, the vast desert and stuff. Reminds me of the homeland. <laughs> I no, was going to uh, say, it's coming. <laughs> I knew it, dude. I was like, it's coming from somewhere. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah. Duskwood has the best quest, though. I think Duskwood, you know, just the quest. Legend of Stalvon, Bride of the Embalmer, yeah. the Morladim quest, Morbin Fell. In general, like the Duskwood quests are on another level, but I, I like Tanaris a lot. So many good zones, man. Yeah, Dusk, Duskwood, I think, is Duskwood and Winter Spring. Uh, it's, it's funny, like, I don't know. I think, uh, I mean, we all, we all kind of, like, overlapped quite a bit, but uh, those are good zones. I, I really, really like Duskwood, and, and Winter Spring is, you know, the snow and stuff is really cool. And So I'm from Texas, so we don't get a lot of snow. So, <laughs> so like, even snow yeah. in a video game is exciting for me. <laughs> I would even say... Uh... I really loved old as Shara. So it was like an autumn esque zone and it yeah. wasn't, you know, goblin destroyed or anything. It was just really chill. There's some Naga around there, but like, you know, it's like the fall trees. You go around, you just you know, I just remember gathering herbs. That's like like I said earlier. Yeah. <laughs> um or even uh hinterlands. I like the hinterlands a lot as yes, well. Yes, I like it a lot too, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what's funny? I, I think if I remember correctly, I don't think that I had actually explored like in vanilla wow i don't think i'd actually like fully explore ashara because i did not have a douse i remember i didn't i didn't have the the uh the douse for mc in in retail right. vanilla mm -hmm. and i'm pretty sure i i didn't i didn't have anything more than just the ashara flight path like for the longest time and like on my retail <laughs> wow character like i didn't go and like explore all that stuff until mm -hmm. uh I, I came back and did it again like on my old youtube streams which is kind of crazy but um oh, ashara wasn't like there wasn't much there yeah <laughs> it's like, kind of a random zone it's like until they cataclysmed it really like, yeah. there really yeah. wasn't much in ashara the most notable thing there is probably uh the dragon mm -hmm. azure ghost yeah right? and i never yeah. did him either yeah yeah no, i think they said uh like ashara i think that's one of the reasons why it was so overhauled in cataclysm it was just never finished like they never finished it until kata basically Mm. But yeah, like I said, Azurgos and and uh, yeah, the Douses, I guess. Mm -hmm. Oh, Feralus is another good one too. I always liked Feralus. I like green, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> green and snow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Honestly, Elwyn, dude, Elwyn's not like it's kind of Elwyn's like a, a nice one too. Answer, but yeah. it's, it's really nice, man. Mm -hmm. With the music too, it's next level. Yeah, I like mm -hmm. Elwyn a lot. Um, let's go to Twitter. Let's see if we got any Twitter questions. Um. Actually, my phone is frozen. <laughs> and okay, it's it's fine. We can get to that later. My phone's like freezing up. But um, let's see. This is from Domco. Uh, do you guys think that they should fix certain bugs, optimize the game in ways that might change gameplay? For example, improving pet scripts so that pet behavior is more reliable in combat, uh, which would in turn make pets more effective. What about corrupted blood if they progress to it? So it's kind of like two questions. Um, on the first, on the first thing, I think there's going to be some natural like back end under the hood type of stuff that's going to get cleaned up. Um, I don't think they should go out of their way to to do stuff like that because what's going to end up happening is there's going to be like indirect buffs, like you said, like maybe making pets more effective. Um, I I think that some stuff is just going to happen. Like, as far as, like, so if you've played on, like, a private server, especially if you're from NA, you'll notice that, like, one, the, the client is, is not very responsive compared to Retail WoW. And the second thing you'll yeah. notice is that you're, you have way more latency than you're probably used to playing most other games uh, because mm -hmm. they're, you're, you're playing on a server that's overseas. Um, stuff like that, I think, is naturally going to get fixed. I don't think they should go out of their way to... Uh, to like make any changes like fixing any like you know like bugs like you said um unless it's what do like, you think about 
Go ahead. The, the first thing that comes to my mind is the um, all the alley jump and the worst on Gold's jump, where you can essentially just like... Like the wall jumps? The wall jumps, yeah, the wall jumps. I don't remember. I, I, I would want to see those fixed. I, if I remember right, you could get in trouble for that. Because what would Once happen the... is like... Well, basically, people would like wall jump. Uh, you could you could go and not have to take the ramp or the uh, or the tunnel to to cap a flag. So people would get oh, the flag yeah, yeah. and then they would jump on the side like through the graveyard and then get up there. Um, there's like there, and there's a bunch of jumps actually in Warsong. Like that was one. Another thing people would do is like they would find a way to get on top of one of the huts, like the berserker hut or the resto hut. They would get on the, the resto hut. And, uh, and just like hang out, and they could just run around, and they could just line a sight the whole time, and uh, I mean nobody could get up there. And this wasn't at a time where you had like death grip or anything like that, so you couldn't pull them down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't remember. I remember like people could. Uh, I I remember people getting in trouble for stuff like that. So I I don't know. Like that just might be like private server memory. I, I don't know. Either way, like it should just be how it was. Well, on a lesser extent, there's like the uh, the old wall walking. You could get up to like under Orgrimmar, like you'd go on top of Orgrimmar, and then you'd get under Orgrimmar. I think you could do that with Iron Forge too. Like you get all the way up on Iron Forge before there was flying, and they could, uh, as the uh, what's it called, the airfield. Yeah, the airfield. You could get up to the airfield. Yeah. Yeah, and I think all the way at the top there was like a, a skeleton of like a dwarf or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little flag. Yeah. No, I see. I, I love all that stuff. Honestly, like I love all the wall jumping mm. and stuff like that. But I think like in battlegrounds. I don't. I, I. I do. I. I just for some reason I remember people getting in trouble for it. But um, what Dare do you think I about? Uh, sorry, I, go ahead. I, I just wanted to say uh, regarding the wall jumping. I actually. Uh, I'm kind of okay with it. In fact, I think it's just kind of like another skill you can master in BGs, like the war song jumps. Like, it's just like another layer of complexity that you know something you have to take into account when you're chasing like an FC or something like that. Just to be aware of those jumps or like. You know, if you know those jumps, it kind of gives you an edge over people who don't. And, and I kind of like that separation between tiers of players. But but I, I do want to go back to the Voidwalker, the pet question, because I think that's actually really big. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, like there were just there might be a lot of things that are just uh, that change, not intentionally, but as a consequence of downgrading the game from the current client. And that, that was a great example for whoever asked. The, who was the guy who asked the question? That was Domko. Yeah, like that was that was a great question from Domko. Like pet pathing stuff like that so many things dude so many things are probably going to change unintentionally and i think it's really um hopefully that's the job of the beta is for players like you know everybody here and, and whoever gets access to kind of dissect those changes to discover those changes and if they do have a severe impact on the game to bring it to blizzard's attention just be like yo man like this this is game breaking or this just changes how the game felt back in the day but I, or, I, I expect a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. With pet pathing, it could just be how it was back in vanilla, and it would seem like a change if you've been playing on private servers. But you know, private servers have never really yep. perfectly nailed pet pathing, so it would feel different, but it would actually be correct because you've been playing the wrong way for so long. Yeah. Well, and, and I don't want to get too much into this, but like, there's all kinds of stuff like that goes into, mm -hmm. like, you're talking about like V maps pathing stuff like yeah. that in general that private servers have like historically been pretty pretty bad at um yeah like there's a few that are better than others right uh at the end of the day like no no private server is going to be perfect you know we've been saying that forever but um there's there's definitely certain things that you'll see on some private servers that you won't see on other private servers and it's because like nothing is really accurate and you don't really know how to do a lot of the stuff and uh people will try and do like finicky things and they might do something here and then they'll claim that like oh well this isn't blizz like even though, like, assuming Blizzard says, like, okay, 100% no changes, whatever, uh, and they didn't change something, then I think that'll be interesting, right? Seeing people complain about something being changed whenever they're they're talking about their private server experience. Because I know, I, I think I'm going to run into something like that where I'm going to be like, wait, I thought it was like this, and then I, I end up being wrong because, like, I've been, uh, like, basically, I, I like, my, my, my brain gets freaking confused because of what I've seen more recently, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. Second part of that question was, uh, what about corrupted blood? If they progress to it, I've talked about this before. Actually, like stuff like that. That's that's an oversight and design that was hot fixed. Right. Yeah. Like very similar to the uh, very similar to the reckoning bug, and uh, which was it wasn't even a bug. It was you could stack it unlimited. Like it, it was limitless. Right. How much you could stack it, and what would happen, or what didn't happen was there was a paladin who just 
had I think a feral druid just sit there and crit him like a thousand times or something, some insane amount of times. And Kazik had spawned the world boss, and he basically just ran up to him. I think he bubbled, ran up to him, and one shot him. <laughs> so like, <laughs> yeah, like they were like, okay. We did not think anybody was going to do that. <laughs> so we're going to have to change this to cap it out at four stacks. So, like, the original Wreck Bomb, yeah, it was it was, it was was big time. But, like, now, like, a Wreck Bomb is four. Four stacks of white hits plus the one. Um, see, like, that's an oversight in design. I think the Corrupted Blood is, is very similar. Like, that's not something that they thought, like, you know, people would transfer it to their pets, dismiss their pets, bring it back, and then the pet just spreads the AIDS to everybody. <laughs> like, see, it's, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would I would categorize like the graveyard or not the graveyard uh, the battleground jumps as an oversight. Like, you have to ask yourself, was this intended? And I would say probably not, right? Yeah, you think? it probably wasn't intended. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I don't know if people got in trouble with it for that or not back in the day. Yeah, I do remember people say. getting in trouble, but I don't know if I'm making that up or not. So I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Whenever whenever that one hits, we'll see. What about this? Do you think do you think mind controlling people out of like Warsong Gulch should be or I've seen it I've seen it done in Arathi Basin as well should be mm -hmm. punishable? Uh no. Out of the instance portal. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think, think I've yeah. done it to a few people. So <laughs> I, used to play I hate mind control no. so much. Yeah. Like I think yeah. it's like it should never have been in the game. Like that's how much I hate it. But I, I don't think you should get in trouble for it. Um that's a good one. That's a real good one. But yeah, I don't. I don't think you should get in trouble for it or whatever. Uh, like, just don't get mind controlled next to the portal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the thing is, like, if, if you're if you're resing and they're graveyard camping you, you don't really have much option. Yeah, right? like, I've seen that. Well, happen. I would hope they the mind control me out at that point, so I can. End my <laughs> <laughs> just end it, dude. Just well, the thing is, you get you get deserter if it happens. You get a what is it, fifteen minute deserter, yeah. thirty minute deserter. Like and that's if you're the ranking. That's really bad. Yeah. That's really bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's here's the thing. Here's the here's the fix of that. You just got to cancel the res and you just got to sit there and and just yeah. yeah you yeah. just got to keep canceling the res until until the game's over. Because the game's yeah. gonna end soon if they're camping the graveyard like that in an Arathi Basin. Yeah. At least Arathi Basin is a really bad one. You're right. Like Warsong is is a little bit easier to avoid, but Arathi yeah. Basin is really really bad. Uh, just because like it's right the the graveyard is right next to the instance portal. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Regarding the uh, the corrupted blood thing, I feel like bringing stuff back like that, as cool as it might seem, could potentially tarnish the legacy of that event. You know, part of what made that so like spectacular was like all the cultural stuff surrounding it, like you know that, that uh, university doing like the study on it and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and just it being accidental. If you bring it back, when people know how to abuse it and they know what's coming, it's not as exciting. And it just, it could potentially tarnish the legacy of the original incident. And I feel like, look, that was amazing. It was cool. It's like this highlight in WoW's history. But bringing it back would just be like me, me for like 10 minutes. And then everyone would get bored of it. Because, oh, no, I'm dying over and over again. I know what's coming. It's not interesting anymore. There's no mystery beyond it, uh, behind it. So it's kind of like just some things just keep them in the past. They're awesome memories. They're cool things about the game bringing them back as a gimmick kind of I, I feel like just takes away from that yeah would you would you guys want to see one talisman of binding shard drop like one worldwide or something i i do i really do, do? Yeah. it would be kind of cool it's yeah. funny because that totally goes against what tips just said but at the <laughs> yeah, same time know, it would still it's be like cool. a totally different view on it too <laughs> yeah. no, it, it would be cool because something like that is such an isolated thing like one person gets it in the entire world it's a pretty inconsequential neck piece like I do think it does tarnish the original one too, but uh, it, that's kind of more of like an Easter egg thing, like kind of then like this big event and, you know, recreating an event that was based on like mystery and oh my God, WTF and stuff like that. when that shock value is just no longer going to be there. So yeah, I mean, I, it is what it is. Yeah. And I mean, it's a, it, so the necklace is like, it's really, really good. I think it's got like uh the it's not like yeah, yeah. well, it, it's really good like end game. It's funny because it's not that good whenever you can get it in MC. Like it is because it's like twenty four fire resist, but it's like twenty four fire resist, twenty four nature resist. So it's an insanely good PVP neck because end game. Those are the things that are like I mean shadow is pretty good too end game, but like you have like palm pyro mages with like full nax gear. Like they're just gonna one shot everybody. You have nature for like Ellie shamans that are just gonna one shot people. Like it's it's an insanely good neck. And I mean, it would make somebody pretty strong, but like, there's one in the world 
like you want to talk about a legendary item like yeah. that's that's a legendary you know <laughs> yeah yeah I mean, I, 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 I think I don't know. I, I would totally, I would totally be for one player getting it. Um, you know, actually, what? well, I, I was just gonna say the guy who got it. Uh, I, I want to check his armory. I checked his armory like a, a few years ago, and he still was just wearing it. He was just wearing it like logged <laughs> off or something. And he was in. I don't know if anybody remembers the 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 add on nerfed UI, knocked in from nerfed. There it is. There it is. Mr. Alex Danger got it. But but uh, I think it was that like the guild made a UI called Nerfed UI. He was from that guild. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Um, but yeah. One thing that Blizzard does really well, I feel like they're very good with Easter eggs. Like one of the best companies I've seen with Easter eggs, and they, they even do this in in retail. Like for example, I think the Unstoppable Force in vanilla. There was something called the Stoppable Force. Oh, yeah. That was is that the gray <laughs> item. The gray item. Yeah. yeah. So maybe something like that, where like they have like a gray or like a white version of talisman of binding shard but they call it something slightly different yeah <laughs> just kind of like a, a thing like that just a call back but yeah. yeah talisman of the binding shard yeah talisman of the binding pebble i don't know but uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah it's 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 a good it's a good neck it's a real good neck uh do we have any questions here um we we do we'll take a few more i'll take a few more questions i i don't i don't know where it came from but somebody was asking about uh, somebody was asking about the possibility, and I feel like we talk about this a lot. Like, if not every podcast, it's 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 pretty often. But we'll, we'll go ahead and talk about it anyway, um, just because it is it is something that people ask every single time. Talking about like progression, post Nax, post Nax progression, BC. Uh, what do we expect to see? Uh, it, it comes up pretty much every single every single time. So, um, I think a lot of people, for me, Burning Crusade was actually my favorite expansion or favorite period of time. I, I whenever I'm saying favorite expansion, like I talk about vanilla like that too, but my favorite period of time in the game was actually Burning Crusade, uh, just like a hair. Like I just I just liked it just a little bit more than vanilla, and um, I think that uh, I, I think that's something that we could see. I think that's if they make a lot of money, if they do, if it does really well, if WoW Classic Vanilla does really well, I think WoW Classic Burning Crusade is definitely something that is going to be on the table. Um, as far as like post Nax progressive <laughs> content goes, kind of in the same vein as what Old School RuneScape did, I think that might be on the table too. Um, I don't think Blizzard's going to let their game die. I think if they're going to make Burning Crusade servers, the Burning Crusade servers have to be done in a way where uh, you server transfer to them. You can keep your level 60 characters and you can yeah. maybe not transfer, but a copy, right? So you can keep your original. You can copy to there. You can copy to servers that just stay at 1.12 and then maybe the original server progresses to uh, 1.13 and on. Because there's a lot they could do with that and I don't think Blizzard's going to let their game die. I think if they come up with the idea of something that works... Um, you know, to, to incorporate Hygel and Karazhan, Caverns of Time, uh, Oldham, all, all these things that are in the game in vanilla inside of Hygel, there's presumably it's Deathwing's Lair and Hygel. There's another like an Ixia's Lair type thing, another just, just a dragon raid. I think that that's something that would be really, really, really cool. But uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if that's something they're going to do or not, but I think it might be on the table. I think Burning Crusade is is very very likely if Classic does well. I think they'd go up to Wrath. Honestly, yeah. I think that's kind of like the cutoff point. Like kill the Lich King, and then I think once they hit Cataclysm, they'd be like, all right, we don't have to make servers for this. Mm -hmm. uh, who's the guy who got the neck piece? Is Noctin N O K T Y N from Nerfed? Yeah. Speaking of classic about doing well, do you guys are you guys going to be paying for accounts? Like you'll have a main account and then an alt account for whatever reason? I think I, I think, am. Yeah, I think I'll I'll be paying for two accounts. Yeah. I might yeah, have to cancel to my Dark Angel Camelot. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a, it's been a while. <laughs> Mine'll just depend on how much fun and like, you know, how committed I am to it at that point. Cause like I don't remember you know hardly anything from like playing it and leveling and doing all that so like if i have fun and i level up to 60 because i want to play a rogue uh and i want to gank people and strangle thorn but i feel like most people do uh as well so it's going to end up just being a bunch of rogues fighting each other 
but I want to do that, and then if I have fun, I'll be like, hey, I'll make another character or something like that. But for mm-hmm. now, I want to, I want to just level up and then see what happens from there. Yeah. 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 So, uh, just to kind of like expand on what Stay Safe was saying. So the reason why Stay Safe asked that is because uh, in Vanilla WoW, having multiple characters, like let's say a summoning alt or a, a mage to be like your your portal guy and, and water bot stuff like that's really really valuable like i think that i'm probably going to level a mage uh i don't know if i'll have a summoning alt i well you only have to get the 20 so i might have a summoning alt too but yeah it's not it's it's very common actually at least on private servers where things are free right and uh what, what people would do is they would go, like, they might make a mage, get them to 60. They might make a level 20 summoning alt. And they might make multiple level 20 summoning alts and have them parked at different parts of uh, different parts of the world, right? You might have one in Feralus for a song fire. You might have one on the ZG Island. You might have one outside Dire Mall. You might have one uh, wherever, right? Even Black Rock Mountain, you might have a guy. And um, I don't think it would be a bad idea for somebody who's playing super hardcore to to pay for two accounts and to do something like that well people would like essentially like as a mage you could be a portal profession because you could make so much money just making portals yeah. for people yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. Well, dude i remember <laughs> so you, you you talked you talked about this earlier about like seeing like the same people in iron forge doing the same thing mm-hmm. what i would do is uh there's this guy there, there's this guy who's a guild leader he's a no mage guild leader uh, his name was Manlet, and I would always run up to Manlet, and I would just kneel in front of him, and I'd be like, "Oh, it's the mighty gnome king," and I'd just like RP with him, and, uh, and and he would just give me, he would just give me a full stack of water just every time, but like he would just sit there, like mages will just sit there on uh, on Iron Forge and or like on the bridge in Iron Forge and just sell portals, sell water, whatever, and I would just like mm. RP with them, and I, I would I would seduce him into giving me free water, yeah. So no, it was, it was, no, it, was it was good, like. Stuff like that's cool, you know? Yeah. Well, it's just, uh, it adds to the whole, like, feel of a community in the game. Like, you're like, oh, yeah, there's the portal guy. You know, it's, it's almost like your town, your town, you're like, oh, the bread lady. And the even though there is an actual bread lady in Iron Forge, but, like, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like, ah, oh, there's old man Johnson making his portals again. Yeah. Like, hey, I want another one. Yeah. yeah, I have a very clear memory of there was an enchanter uh, back in Manila Wow who would sit at that cart right outside the Iron Forge yeah. Bank, and he had he said like it was whatever his name's enchanting Emporium, whatever, and he would sell his enchants off the cart, and, like that was that was his enchanting store it was a cart. Uh, <laughs> it's the RP dude. The RP sells. It's yeah. good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I lost it. Oh, there it is. Human Plus. Human Plus is asking, uh, will Ferals have Mangle and will Shamans have Storm Strike? Both were implemented later in Classic. Uh, I believe that those were like the equivalent of Crusader Strike for Paladins in the 2.0 patch. Am I wrong? No, no, no. Those were they were implement. They weren't available at launch, but they became available. If if they were the in, because because I don't know, I don't know the Feral yeah. and, and uh, Enhanced Shaman talent trees. Um, but if those Basically are what is yeah yeah, yeah if they if they're after the rework, then then that would be in because they're going off a of 1.12 base. Um. Exactly. Yeah. So if it's Mangle was not okay. So yeah, basically that here's here's the blanket answer for that. Here's the blanket answer for that. If it was in the game from 1.2.1 and earlier, or really as far as talents go, if it was in the game at 1.2.1, that's what you're gonna see. Um, 1.12. 1.12. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What did I say? 1.2. Oh, 1.1. One, dude, I'm, 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 I think I'm getting, ad, I'm getting adult oh, onset dyslexia. That's what's happening. One point one two point one. Okay, that's that's the patch. Uh, those are the talents that they're gonna go with. <laughs> I, I did say poo. Okay, we're getting derailed. If if you're there, if if, um, if if the talents are there at that point, that's what they're gonna go with. I, I do get a lot of people saying, "What about Crusader Strike? That was in the game at, at the end of Vanilla." And it's like, well, it wasn't, because once it's 2.0, once that first digit changes, that's the next expansion. Like, yep. even even if it's, like, the pre-patch, like, the pre-expansion patch, uh, kind of like we're in now. Like, we're in the BFA patch in retail, but we're not really, like, sure, we're not, like, retail or BFA hasn't launched, but we're in the BFA 8.0 patch. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of how I feel about that. 
but yeah yeah mm -hmm. I agree 100 mm -hmm. uh do you guys see anything any any questions that you guys want to want to pick out in the chat uh, somebody uh, asked uh, earlier, Krendor, I think Storm asked it. Uh, he wanted to know, will you be making Machinima in Classic WoW? Um, I mean, I probably will. Because I'm kind of curious to just go back to the old world and walk around and stuff. So I'll probably get some ideas. The thing is, like, uh, compared to what I used to do, because uh, Machinima used to be my main thing back when I was doing YouTube at the start. And now I've kind of branched out. So I do, like maybe like one or two machinimas a year at this point. Um, but it, it's partially just because uh, I had so many ideas back then. I was like, Ooh, this is great. So motivated. And I've like made over a hundred. And so you just kind of just get burned out and <laughs> you're like, man, I've just, you know, it's, uh, you know, you, it's, I almost feel like I'm making sequels where it's like, here comes, uh, you know, machinima to electric boogaloo. <laughs> you know the fifth version yeah but and then uh, on top of that there's so many good machinima people nowadays and then uh i do so much streaming it's like a, a good i know i'm gonna stream classic wow i know that's the big thing i'm gonna do um because it's gonna give me incentive to be able to play and work at the same time um so i'm uh i don't know uh, I'll probably I'll probably make a few still just because I think I'm going to be motivated from playing classic WoW and having all that nostalgia. Mm -hmm. yeah. We want more boar thrills, dude. Boar <laughs> thrills in all the old zones, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. true. I think if anything, I would probably do that just because they are like when I make those types of videos, it's so focused on the old zones that um, that probably fit really well. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah and you, you mentioned nostalgia again, and that was uh, you, we talked about this earlier in the podcast, guys. Um, but talking about like nostalgia versus game design and, and nostalgia is, is a big, uh, it's a big thing for you. And I think, it's, I think it's a big thing for a lot of people. Um, you know, and, and you like the game design as well, but nostalgia as somebody who, who played from pretty much the beginning, January, 2005, like mm -hmm. that, that's going to be a big thing for you. Um, mm -hmm. I think, I think in the future, I would like to have on somebody who, uh, has who, so, uh, a content creator who's excited for classic, but did not actually get the chance to play. Maybe somebody who started playing in Burning Crusade or Wrath or um, maybe even later on, maybe Cataclysm or something. Because I think that would be a really interesting perspective and uh, what they would expect, what they wanted to. And uh, just see, uh, I don't know, I, I just get their perspective on it. I think that would be something that would be really, really interesting. Um, yeah, because I, I think there's also a lot of people who can relate to that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, this is this is uh, this is a question that's a little bit more specific to to my type of content, but I'll go ahead and answer it from Kirish. Uh, he was asking about like playing a, a Rhett Paladin in Vanilla WoW. Um, is he going to be able to do it as a semi hardcore player, where he's not going to play eight plus hours a day, but he wants to play enough to to be able to raid and to PvP. Um, so. Playing a Rep Paladin in Vanilla WoW, you put in a lot more than you get out of it. The input is a lot higher than the output as compared to like a Fury Warrior and uh, you know whatever other class rogue. Uh, you just you just don't do as much DPS as like as a true like mainly DPS class. Um, you can do fine. You can do well enough if you're in in like a casual rating guild or in a progression rating guild. You're gonna be fine. Uh, you just have to make sure that you're doing all the right things to pull your own weight. Uh, at the end of the day, if you're in a guild of people that you like with good people and, and you're doing all the right things and being a good raider, doing a little bit more DPS for one character is not going to make the difference in whether or not that you're going to complete the raid. I think that's total bullcrap. Like, anybody who says, like, oh, well, we can't kill this boss because we have a Moonkin. We can't kill it because that... You're, you're bad. Like, your guild, <laughs> like your guild is just bad. <laughs> like, I don't know what to say. Like, you, you should be able to, like... The content, every single raid, every single boss is killable with 39 people. Like, let's say somebody dies at the beginning of the fight, right? You can still kill the boss. So having that 40th person be a Rep Paladin or a Moonkin or a Feral Druid DPS, whatever. I think Feral Druids are very good, by the way, as, as off tanks too. Uh, very good fear raid. But that's besides the point. My point is, is that that one guy doing a little bit less DPS 
uh, is not going to make a big difference to me. You just got to make sure that you're being a good raider and you're doing all the right things. Um, you know, showing up with your consumes, your world buffs, this and that. And uh, you should be just fine. I think all that is true. Um, like, definitely all that is true. But I think, like, there is also, there definitely is also class discrimination. There is discrimination in Vanilla WoW. And, in, uh, in current it, year? In current year, I know. It, it, wow. it, will be, it will be much harder for you to get a raid spot or or definitely uh, even more so than a raid spot, a pre-made spot if you're a Red Paladin. It'll be very hard for you. I think that's that's the reality. Yeah, you got to prove yourself. You got you got to come out and prove yourself. Uh, yep. Like a lot of people think for me, like I I didn't stream or do any of that stuff before I was doing Vanilla Ret. Like I was like I I was just good at it and I knew how to play it, and I'd been checked out a while for a lot of years. And people are like, oh, well, S fan gets to do whatever because he's a streamer. It's like, well, no, like I I earned all that stuff before I started streaming. Like I I earned a raid spot. I got invited to the guild. Whatever. I got all that before I started streaming, and then eventually it just went from there. So, yeah, mm-hmm. kind of a, just a side comment too to add to that. It's like if you if you really think about it, five out of the seven raids in vanilla are, are not like balls to the wall, like insane. You know what I mean? Like Molten Core, Anixia, Blackwing Lair, ZG, AQ20. Like, dare I say, like a lot of raiding guilds will be able to clear that content, basically. Yeah. And that's that's not the content that requires like insane min maxing and stuff like that. But it's just kind of funny how when we talk about viability, we're usually talking about in terms of like AQ and Nax when technically like 75% of the content in vanilla is, is not AQ or Nax at the, at the end game. But just something to think about, I guess. If you're not going into a really hardcore guild, you can get away with Paladins, you can get away with Druids. But if you want to go into AQ40 and Nax40, obviously uh, it's, you know, you kind of have to make some changes there. I'm kind of curious to see how streaming impacts like classic WoW. Uh, because you know there's going to be everybody streaming it, everybody's going to be playing it, and I want to see like, like are there going to be, you know, guilds of fans fighting other streamer guilds? Like, yeah, yeah. you don't know how it's going to be. It's going to be. It's going to be very interesting. Yeah. We were actually, it's funny, dude. It's so weird that you bring this up. So, uh, 1776 viewer count, the American number, by the way. I just want to point that out. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so. so uh, <laughs> We were talking about this last night. So, so Asmin and uh, Nick and Tips and and Stay Safe, a bunch of us were actually sitting in my Discord while while we were streaming. I just gotten the big Blizzard bear, uh, MJE uh, gave that to me. That was pretty awesome. And um, we were just talking about like streamers in Vanilla WoW. Like, are we going to be able to play on the same server? Are we going to be able to do this? Because like queue times are going to be nuts. I mean, whatever Soda or whatever server Soda or Asmin are on you just take those those guys just as one person that server is going to be packed like are people Mm going to care that much to want to play with them are people just all going to flood there like are we going to be able to go play on the same server because i want to play with my friends that's what i want to do and and not all not all the people that i've made friends with are streamers of course but um Mm. a lot of them are and that's something that's going to be very interesting and we were just kind of having that discussion last night it's going to be really really uh it's going to be really really interesting to see actually yeah, it's gonna be really interesting to see. That might be a, a, a whole a whole topic for another time, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It all depends on how they population caps and do they do sharding, which we hopefully they don't, right? <laughs> um, yeah, man, it's how many servers are they gonna have? I mean, we all this stuff is still kind of, you know, up in the air. So hopefully, as yeah. more information comes out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the queue times. The queue times are like my biggest concern at this point. With being on like a like a streamer server or whatever, that that could be really really annoying. Yeah, yeah. it would be mm-hmm. a lot of fun, but uh, it could be kind of scary too. <laughs> like just in terms of like, hey guys, we're uh we're in a two hour queue. <laughs> stream yeah. stream starting soon. Yeah. yeah, like I can't imagine a scenario where Blizzard overshoots the servers. They're probably going to undershoot the servers, mm-hmm. and if yeah. they have like. 50 servers even at 5k cap that's 250,000 people dude there's going to be like three to five million people at least on that first day trying to log in Mm -hmm. no matter what we're going to be stuck i mean unless you get in right away you're going to be stuck in some gnarly queues those first couple of days for sure yeah you're the first week or first month i'd say the first week definitely and then the first month it'll probably drop a bit and then after that it'll probably balance out you know what I'm going to get? Yeah. I'm going to get one of those little flamingo things that does this and dips its face in the water, <laughs> and I'm going to put that on yeah. my space bar. 
like and on the so, Simpsons. Yeah, yeah, so I'm exactly <laughs> like on the Simpsons, and like I'm gonna put it on my space bar. So just like Homer did that, press any key for work. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do that, so my character keeps jumping, and I never log off, so I never have to worry about a queue. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It's genius. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, classic is 99.9 percent .9 not pro and probably not gonna be free master camper. Yeah. No. I mean, yeah. that's the true classic experience. You paid $15 a month. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's true. And actually, here's the thing. I, I, I think there's a, uh, they're going back to like the, like if your tax values have changed in your area, they're going to take the tax values from 2004. So the tax you're going to pay, yeah, it's really weird. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and Europeans got it the month late and Australians don't even have their own. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. No changes, dude. Yeah, no changes. changes. No changes. Yeah, George Bush is still president. Yeah, we're going back, dude. <laughs> because we're on this subject i actually have a question for crendor because crendor you bought the game back in the day you know uh mm -hmm. all of us are vanilla boys um what do you think crendor about having to repurchase the game at box price like if you have to buy a 60 dollar box version of classic plus a subscription what's your impression on that oh if it was a box i'd buy the box i mean I, i'd buy the box just for the nostalgia even though yeah. I still have the box, I would still buy another box. What? Well, yeah, if they come out with a classic collector's edition, I would definitely buy it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I mean, like the base game on principle, like, would you be okay with buying the same game twice, I guess? Because I, 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 I think that's a question a lot of people have in their minds. Like, I already bought vanilla back in the day. Why do I have to buy it again? You know what I mean? And is classic vanilla? I mean, do you consider those the same game? Um, I mean, I don't think you should have to buy, like, the full $60 price again i think it should just be the subscription because i mean essentially they've told you like hey you've got wow you've got all the versions of wow now so i mean it should include that even though they're remaking it and everything at least from my perspective yeah i i'm, I'm gonna be honest i i could care less either way like mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and and let's be real like people want this game so bad and we talked about earlier they're a business they might just make you buy like a 20 dollar or something i don't know what they're gonna do if they make you pay for that, I'm going to pay for it. And I think I, I, I would be shocked if anybody didn't pay for it. I would but, think they would do it like a collector's edition, like you said. I yeah. think that would be really cool. So even even if they put like some really old school stuff in there, like uh, like I remember the manual that I have from when I bought it. Uh, it's It tells you about how the Taran don't get mounts. They get yeah. the planes running yeah. ability. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so uh, just putting things like that in be like hey from the original launch we had you know a thing that showed Taran not getting mounts you know like little easter egg tidbits and all yeah. that type of stuff well and here, here's something else too um some who, who just said this in the chat and this is basically like a, a really really good point but like yeah echoical said this they put work in to bring it back so somebody's got to get paid right so so they have a dev team for classic right there, there's a group of developers as a team that's making WoW Classic. So, it, I mean, somebody's got to get paid for work, right? I, I, it wouldn't be surprising to me if they, if they made people pay. Uh, I don't think. Now, here's another thing. I don't think that there's going to be a separate subscription. I think it's in, it's in everybody's best interest to have them be linked subscriptions. So, mm -hmm. let's say you have to pay if you're in two. Like, I'm not saying that this is the case, but. In the hypothetical sense of like, let's say there's two scenarios where there's no payment, but you got to pay $5 a month. There's no box or whatever that you have to buy. And then you have to pay $5 a month for classic in addition to retail. So it's $20 a month or 15, right? Let's make it two full mm -hmm. subscriptions versus like you, you buy the box and then it's just linked into your WAS subscription. I mean, what would be amazing, and I don't know if they'll do this, even though, even though they're still going to make a ton of money off of it, I think. If you don't have to pay for it, if you don't have to pay for it and you don't have to pay for a subscription, as long as you have a WoW subscription, and a WoW subscription has two linked <laughs> subscriptions, because $30 a month yeah. is, is a lot of money for, for a lot of people, right? Yeah. I don't think they're going to do that. I really don't think they're going to do that. Uh, but it just would be really, really cool if they didn't make us like pay for the box or the original purchase. Um, their numbers, their sub numbers are going to skyrocket. Mm. It's going to be huge. Like, oh, yeah. WoW Classic yeah. is – it's. Like, I, I'm, I'm not joking whenever I say this, like at least whenever I think this, I think that WoW Classic is almost gonna be a little bit of a renaissance 
in gaming. Like people are going to start to realize like why is Classic so popular? Why is this game from 2004 so popular? And people are going to take elements of that game and uh, see that like okay, people like the old stuff, right? There's so many old games that were really really good. Why do they like it so much as opposed to like these new games that people are like running through and they're like okay I'm bored of this in a few months, you know? Like mm-hmm. okay like this was a really good game like I, I haven't heard of anybody talking about like God of War came out God of War four came out and everybody and their mom was talking about it I haven't heard a thing about it in maybe a month you know mm-hmm. it's been fourteen years and we're still talking about Vanilla WoW <laughs> like, well, yeah, think, I know. Um, like a bunch of morons I, <laughs> I think for the subscription I think that it is just going to be tied into your fifteen dollar WoW subscription and the main reason I think yeah. that is because from a business uh, side of things I can see them being like all right. We'll get them to play classic WoW, and then I'm sure a lot of people will be like, "Wow, this this is great. This is yeah. fun. Maybe I will check out the BFA and the modern game, whatever expansion we're at at that point." And then they'll be like, "Oh, you know, I can buy them out. Oh, I can." <laughs> and they want to hook you into yeah. the modern game from the classic WoW, and I'm sure that's definitely a like point they bring up when pitching this to all the high up CEOs that are like, "What's the ROI?" Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Definitely, you know. that 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 player crossover is really important. I think. I well, I think the best option or the best way is to have them linked with the sub and then have both games be very successful and have a ton of crossover. I think that's yeah. that's how it should go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think Blizzard will do whatever maximizes the ROI. They'll be testing. They'll be polling. They'll be figuring it out internally. They're they're running their analytics. They're trying to find out what's going to make them the most money, and that is what they will probably select in the end. Yeah. So, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, a lot of the big people that make these decisions don't care they could put minions in wow and they wouldn't give a shit they'd be like is it making money you right. know because that's all yeah. they care about but yeah. i think uh i think wow classic would even benefit from that because a lot of people would play the like modern version mm-hmm. and then when there'd be dry spells in wow they'd be like hey i'm gonna go play some uh some vanilla wow you yep. know i can go do that and i think that would see spikes every so often whenever the main game would run out of content mm-hmm. Yeah, or or vice versa. Like I know for me, I uh, I don't plan on raiding in BFA after Classic comes out, but I would really, really like to arena still. Like I just I love arenas. So, uh, I mean that's you know, that's something I'd, I'd be interested in doing. Uh, somebody, let me see if I can find it. Somebody said that, like yeah, God of War is not an MMO, but that's not that's not necessarily like what I was talking about. Who said that? Um, I can't find it. Um, uh, but yeah, somebody was saying, well, God of War is not an MMO. It's like, yeah, it's not, but that's not necessarily what, what I was talking about. Like people still talk about kingdom hearts and people are still waiting for kingdom hearts three to come out. Right. People yeah. still are waiting for half-life three to come out, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, I, I use God of War because that was a really popular recent game. And, uh, Skyrim's another one space. Exactly. Yeah. Skyrim's another yeah. one. These are games that came out years ago, but people are, are so attached to them because they were good games, you know. And, and that's the same way I feel about. Uh, uh, that's the same way I feel about Vanilla WoW. So yeah, really, really good games have have definitely they have staying power, and you don't see many games with staying power these days. They just, you know, they're they're flash in the pan or whatever that saying is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. Call of Duty Twelve. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> one more time. <laughs> now we've got lasers that shoot out of our eyes. <laughs> Well, it's because those are the safe, the safe bets as well. They're mm-hmm. like, I know I can make this, and I know it'll sell enough to be profitable, and we don't have to have creativity uh, at all. And you know, you just pump it out every year, and then always some guys like, oh, new modern, modern warfare. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. Know? All the like normie people out there, like, bro, have you played this game? I swear to God, yeah. The amount of people and like that don't play games that I'm friends with, they're like. Hey, YouTube, Twitch, do you play Fortnite? Yes, dude. And I'm like, don't bring that up to me ever again. <laughs> it's so frustrating. Like, everybody's <laughs> like, oh, you play Fortnite. I'm like, no. Like, there's more games than that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's fine. Like, you know, people can play Fortnite. It's fine. You know, like, you, like, but not everybody who plays games plays Fortnite. Yeah. So, anyways, guys, uh, I know uh, we, we got to get going. And, uh... Yeah, Krendor, Krendor's got to get going. 
We're, we're, we're going to make him late. We don't want to do that. He, he came in, joined us. Yeah, anyways, anyways. <laughs> Guys, please, 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 if you haven't already, again, uh, please go follow Crendor, Tips Out Baby, and Stay Safe TV. Yeah, if you could post those links. There you go. Yeah, if you guys could go follow them as well uh, as myself, we would really, really appreciate that. We want to do these uh, classic cast about one every two weeks. We, we want to we wanna do one about every two weeks or so, maybe three. It just depends. So um, I'm going to be hosting Stay Safe. If you guys could follow us on Twitter as well. YouTube. Right here on everybody's panels. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We'll see you guys later. Peace. Peace. See you. <clears throat> Hogs out. <laughs> Hogs out. <laughs> uh, ho hogs out. <laughs>